Welcome back, listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Ratchet Ramblings podcast presented to you by the CSPN. I'm one third of your host, Jeremy, aka Black Dante on Twitter, aka Nigga Mort, aka Y'all are not the fuck okay, aka fucking Nicki Minaj, aka. Mm, you know what? I had one, but fuck it. Fuck it. Um, and I'm joined by What's up, guys? Curtis the Menace, aka Albus Dumblehore, aka Trillificent on all social media. Um, as we said before, we're gonna stagger our break. So our sister Candace is now officially on break for a couple of weeks. Right, I believe is. she'll come back maybe sometime in October. She's yes. off doing bad bitch teens. Yes. So yes. we send love and light to her while she is doing what she got to do. Yes, and she deserves it. I mean, if she if, does deserve, you know, yes. our friend does a lot. She does a lot. So she deserves. So we are going to POP hold it down while she is on break. Um, and we are going to keep on um, the nigga tree right on going. Um, <clears throat> um, and um, you know what? Fuck it. I ain't even gonna pay no bills uh, this week. Well, I might pay them at the end, but fuck it. Mm. Fuck it. Yep. So let's get into it. Um, I do have a review though. Um, thank okay. you for everyone that is, you know, leaving ratings and reviews, and we are seeing an uptick in those. So thank you so much. Uh, your support means everything, literally. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't already gone to Apple Podcasts and left a rating or a review, please do so this week and help us out with that. No one star woes, please. Correct, because Candace just might temporarily come off break to drag you. So and I had that as a, as a special little sound clip. <laughs> <And> that ain't <laughs> no lie. That's not an uh, an exaggeration either. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Listen, Candace will come from the shadows to drag you like her mama be dragging OG. Mm, woo. Mm. Talk about a dragon. Mm, mama White Diamonds. Mm. Mm -hmm. Shout out to them. So, yeah. Let's get into it. Uh, use the hashtag Ratchet Ramblings Pod whenever you listen and you tweet or you post about the show on Instagram or on Twitter. It helps other people find us when you use that hashtag and it helps make it easy so we can see what you guys have to say about what you hear, our assessment of these shitty ass shows. Mm. Just makes it everything easy. So use that hashtag, help us out. Let's get into the shit. So where are we starting? Um, let's see, let's see. Um, the, the, you know what? Let's get love and hip hop the fuck out of the way. Let's let's go ahead and get love and hip hop out of the way. That's fine. So I'm gonna preface this conversation by saying this: when I watched the show, I was two steps away from quitting the season. But at this point, I'm pretty much done with this season. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I don't know who the fuck they have in the writer's room, but they continue to play in my face week after week. <laughs> it has gone from theater to goofy ass creative writing workshop real quick. <laughs> and I and bad acting, bad acting, bad writing, bad camera work, bad editing, bad everything. Just bad. This is the I. I of all of the show, <laughs> just, I'm over it. This is the are y'all okay? No, the fuck y'all not. Mm -hmm. Um, but you so know, I, if, I if I don't have any, oh, I was just gonna end it by saying if I don't have any commentary about loving hip hop Hollywood after this episode, then you can take that to heart to mean I stop watching the shit, <laughs> and I mean that with every inch of my black heart. Yeah, yeah. Um. So let me say this. Uh, <clears throat> so we picked off where it was last week with A1 jumping across the table at the dinner. Um, let me say this. We can probably chop it up to, like I said, bad writing, bad acting, you know, whatever. With that said, even if it's acting and even if it's scripted, the way that Ray J is moving, this motherfucker done transformed into Carla Reed. Truly. Because what? Like, like, I, I, like, 
that it acting aside, I feel that A1 was like that wasn't for the cameras. That nigga was legitimately mad at Safari about this whole situation. Shit at Ray J and rightfully so. Like they were saying, like, why A1 got smoked for Ray J? Nigga, why because should he not? Stupid. Now he's, I don't think I think A1 is taking it to the extreme, but I, I'm not saying he don't have a, a right or a reason to be upset with Ray J because what the fuck is you doing? Right, you you host how we supposed to be brothers and not once have you come to me one on one and told me the bullshit that you've been hearing that can't that keeps you from sleeping at night. Right, and then you when you do, and do this shit with the goddamn audience, like what the fuck a, is wrong with you? With an audience in a time where we. At a time when we spoke, me and Lyric was supposed to be celebrating our new baby with our friends, and then you gonna ho- have a nigga that allegedly is in some shit uh, pop up, and you think this is a good idea? Like you, like you said, like you can't come to me like brother to brother and be like, "Look, this is what it is. This is what's been said." Like you gotta surprise me. Like I said, going full Carl Red, full, and full looking Car- dumb and not getting anything accomplished and making things worse than they were before. Just like Carly Red. And again, nigga, don't you got a whole pregnant wife you need to be taking? This is why Princess said, mind your damn business. Yeah. She told you exactly what you needed to be doing, and you decided that Princess don't know what she's talking about, but as we've seen in pretty much every instance, Princess always knows what she's talking about when it comes to your stupid ass. I don't know why you don't want to listen to your wife. Right, because your damn sure can't listen to your sister and your mama. You do listen to your sister and your mama. That's why you stupid now. Yeah, well, that's true too. Mm. 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 But yeah, it's definitely been that everybody hates A one series, and I'm just like, I'm a little bit tired. Like, yeah, even yeah. I, even if it is acting, like yeah, that's got to be exhausting. Like, how many scenes do we have to do? We have to film where I'm beefing with somebody. Like, I am tired. <laughs> right, my I am tired. My dread is tired. My pearl is tired. Like, it's it's enough. Yeah. Shit, I'm already married to Lyrica. That's tiresome enough in itself. Hello. Like, goddamn. I stand by my assessment. This is all, it's terribly scripted, terribly acted, and it's a shit show. Ray J. <laughs> Some, Ray J pretty much has taken over the mantle of being the messy one this season. Brooke, yeah. yeah. Brooke has calmed down a bit, and K. Michelle keep repeating the same shit. Yeah, and hiding from Paris. She hiding from everybody. Yeah, well, that's true too. But yeah, don't hide from that overbite though. Mm -hmm. Or those vocals, air quotes. She don't hide from them (laughs) low balances. (laughs) (laughs) Four dollars, sis. Four dollars. Four dollars. Some soup and crackers. Four dollars. But yeah, like I was saying, I don't, I don't, I don't blame A One for having smoke for Ray J, but he's just taking it too far. Like he could have just been like, "Hey, you know that was fucked up. What you did? Which you out of my business? Which you need to? You're a messy ass Norwood, just like the rest of them. A messy ass Norwood. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not fooling me with this. I was just trying to look out for your bullshit because you could and you should have left it all private if you were really concerned about my well being. So boom, boom, that's that." Dap, buy me a drink, bitch nigga, and let's <laughs> chill. But it didn't need to be all that. And then right, but I, Ray J escalating the situation. It's nothing wrong with a brotherly fade, bitch. What is you saying? Y'all are grown as fuck. What is you saying? Yeah, I feel like, like I said, I I agree with you that a one. You know, maybe taking it a bit too far, but at the same time, it's like if someone telling you, it, Ray J get 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 defensive with the shit. Like when he right. getting called out for being a messy little bitch, he get defensive about the shit, and then he talking about it's nothing wrong with little brotherly fade. Like I'm sorry, but I would have reacted the same way A one did. Oh, you talking about fade? So what's up? Like I mean, yeah, and- that's what I'm saying. That's why I said he escalated that situation, which I didn't understand. I'm like, why are you so defensive to the point where you want to fight? That don't make no sense. You looking? You supposed to be looking out for him, have his best interests at heart, and everything that you're doing is trying to be there for him. But when he tell you you looking real messy in these streets, you get mad and you want to fight him. What kind of sense does that make? And and I and listen, I look. look a one was right. Like it, it's key that the security was holding a one back and not Ray J. Cause Ray J wasn't gonna do nothing. Ray J ain't gonna. What's that saying? He ain't gonna bust a grape in a fruit fight. Correct. 
Ray J not gonna do shit. He did have a nice ass in that scene though, but that's it. I like the suit. I like the suit. Baby. Yeah, I mean the suit was nice, and like I said, I got my life for a few seconds. But the rest of that, I was like, mm. it's like I wish Ray J would just not talk. Like I, I, I could do a lot with Ray J if he just would not like speak or act on his own. Like if Ray J was a sim. <laughs> and I could just control everything that he does and every interaction that he has. There's some things I could do with Ray J. But this Ray J, no, thank you. Throw it away. Throw the whole nigga away. Yeah, throw it away. Speaking of throwing the whole nigga away, why do we need to see Lucci? He looked thrown away. Keep him away. Why? I don't, I don't I still don't understand why he on this show. He's literally done nothing the whole season. He's he claimed Literally. he's. I mean, no, he's done something. He's spinning up all his uh his advance. That's what he's doing. Oh yeah, that because they one did tell him like, nigga, you need to slow down. You need to slow down. I thought it came up again. So as some maybe that was a preview or something that I saw. I thought it him fucking up his money came up again, but I'm not sure. Maybe but yeah, he doing the most. That's all he doing is blowing through his 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 advance. Mm-hmm. And looking the way that he looked. Looking the way that he looked, that motherfucker looked like <laughs> he looked like a Newport, <laughs> a single one. <laughs> Get out my head, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, mm. nigga looked like a pair of Virginia Slim. A oh. pair? Nah, he looked like one. <laughs> 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 he not he he don't have enough mass to his body to be more than one. <laughs> But <clears throat> speaking of more than one, um, well, um, it was fun while it lasted to see J. Will um, slash Candy, but hanging with Moniece and getting dealing with Mr. Ray is like, well, you know, it, again, it's like the read. We can't give people too, too much before they start looking a little goofy or dealing with people that look goofy. That whole scene was weird. Like, I expected Mr. Ray to do the most. But that dude in the middle, I think he was a lot. Mikey Pasante, like I and I had heard him on another pod on on a podcast. So like I was recently made aware. Like he's like big deal dancer choreo choreographer. So I was first of all shocked that he was on the show. Right. Say I was. I don't know. I just felt a way about the cattiness between both of them. To be quite honest, like. Mm -hmm. So we just cannot have three gay men, three black gay men or black leaning or half, you know, whatever. Three men of color. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have three gay men of color on the screen without a whole bunch of cattiness and fighting. Like, why did it need to be all of this? Yeah, that's what I was like. I say from both I out of the three, I felt Mr. Ray was the most calm. Which is yeah, he pretty much shut up once you know. Like, what happened to Candy? He said it, and Racer Ray was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, but I guess because the lines were going to the other guy, but I was just like, "Yeah," because I was expecting the, the Mr. Ray to be saying what uh what you said his name, Mikey was or yeah, whatever, Mikey something, Mikey P. Yeah, Mikey Caddy. I yeah, I was just like, why? Why do we need like? I don't understand why y'all couldn't critique this performance without being caddy and of course he gonna get defensive because he's an artist and he's sensitive about his shit mm -hmm. now mm. i will say this while i don't i i feel like they were in the wrong for trying to tell him oh it's pride so everything needs to be poppy and jumpy and blah 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 i do think that you can have different types of music like everything doesn't have to be that oomph music or whatever to get people to to like you can have a, a different kind of song with a banging beat or something. I just felt like they was trying to put him in the box or put the show in a box rather of what kind of music. Like I get it, it's a it's a festival, you want people to dance and everything, but come it's, on. It's more than it's more than one way to creatively express yourself. Yeah, it's different kinds of music that people are going to gravitate towards in a setting. It, it right. doesn't always have to be the stereotypical music of what y'all think gay men listen to. Like, why you think so many R and B people can flourish at Pride? We want to hear that. We want to hear R and B. We don't necessarily have to hear that rave music all the time. Like, I felt like that was weird how they came to him with that. Um, it only needs to be fun performances, and I was like, that don't even sound fun. 
Like yeah. you trying to force fun down people's throats instead of letting the artists give authentic performances. Correct. Like let it be. Go ahead. I would say let it be organic. Like it felt like exactly we wanted to be this one way, but it's so many other different ways. Like it's fun is not as like you say it's not that 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 techno you know mm, 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 music all the time or that stripper shit that La Britney was doing before. <laughs> Listen, like I, I feel like they gave her a lot. It's <laughs> too fucking much because I, I don't see it. I mean, it's pretty like, girl. I, I, I oh, can see. Uh, I mean, I can see a performance where you know she performing like that and people go get their life, but that's not the only thing. Like it's just I don't know. It was just that whole thing was weird. They sound they sounded the fuck stupid. But I will say. Jay Will, he definitely could have picked a better piece to perform. Agree, because to, to audition with, like, even if that was what you ended up performing, that's fine. Like, I could see a little kind of a a gay eight mile gate mile. <laughs> Curtis, <laughs> I could see that because that was what it gave me. It kind of <laughs> gave me eight mile. It gave me that old school gritty rap. Yeah, it gave me that. I'm rapping with a purpose. It, you know, I, I felt that, but. For an audition, not so much. <laughs> right. Right. That that felt like a song like you perform better at when you already in the door, not when not when you trying to put your foot in the door. Right. Like that's the song. Like during your if you perform in more than one song, you know, a couple of bars from that is what you do to let people know, hey, I can really spit. Right. Like that ain't what you audition with. Yeah, but with an audition, they don't care if you can spit or not. They want to know that. You have a song that they feel like people are gonna like and gravitate towards. So All right, he, you know what he did? He tr he showed up to an audition with a deep cut instead of showing up with a single. Correct. That's a good way to put it. And he it's like, no, no, my nigga. He basically clean radioed his audition. There you go. There you go. Mm. So yeah, I mm -hmm. felt like he could have came stronger, but I also feel. Like I agree with you. Like they did a lot, and then he in turn did a lot, being defensive. Yeah. And also, Although I, I would have, I would have gotten a little defensive if you sit up here throwing somebody else's audition in my face. Like that's unprofessional to me. Yeah. Like and I then, shouldn't know what went on with somebody else's audition at all. That don't got nothing to do with what I'm doing in front of your face right now. Right. But then in the preview next week, you see like he going he 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 going to start with just just uh not just Britney, um love Britney. <laughs> he, when they were talking about it, he in the preview, he like, I don't know why they compared me to you because you ain't you you not that girl. And she was like, skirt, skirt. Yeah. Then they started throwing their jabs at each other. And I was just like, uh, right. Another black woman and a black gay man that can't keep their friendship afloat. Groundbreaking. Right. Riveting, Mona. Riveting. Right. You are truly a groundbreaker, a visionary, really, truly. Mm. Speaking oh, of Mona, no. Okay. Now, Curtis, you mm. correct me if I'm wrong. And this is my nigga theory that I was uh, telling, you, telling you about. Okay, so we know that we, we know that the sex tape leak that happened uh, with Tia Marie. We saw that in real time, and we are seeing what happened while they was filming around that, but we already saw this in real time, so we already know how this play out. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but at the time when that shit happened, did we see any blogs or any interviews or any audio or anything of Tierra still Saying he loved Akbar, that he she want to be with Akbar, and the thing. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong, but did we see any of that at the time that that happened? Um, I don't re remember clearly, but I do feel like there was a moment where she was kind of getting dragged for saying that. But I don't remember. I don't remember the details. Yeah, I, I'm trying to remember. Was it at the same time of the of the? It leak? was definitely soon after because I rem I remember that. I don't know if it was on Twitter or if it was on Instagram. I remember seeing some posts like, "Oh, this bitch is dumb. She's still talking about she loved him and he didn't mean to do it, and da, da 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 or some shit like that." And I remember she got a collective eye roll at that, and then the next thing you know, she was suing Fifty Cent. <laughs> 
Right. Did she sue both of them? Or was yeah. it just 50? Because well, I know she I know she lost the lawsuit. She I don't know if she lost the lawsuit, but she did she tried to get because I I had I had halfway turned my wig, or rather I borrowed one of Candace's wig. Um, and I Google because because when I watched the episode, I was like, something don't feel right about this. Same, like, something, same. Something don't feel right, and so I Google because I was like, did they even really file a lawsuit? And I think they did. I I didn't deep dive deeper because I got distracted by some other things that had to do with this. So I was googling. Now she definitely tried to get a restraining order against Akbar and Fifty Cent, and she got denied both of those i believe mm. and i and i saw on the in the search results that 50 cent had posted they were saying kind of prematurely because i don't know if it was official when he started posting it but basically that she did not win that little battle trying to get those restraining orders and he was like goofy bitch basically because you know that's how he is Correct. So, in addition to that, and the reason why it continued to feel weird and made me feel this whole storyline is making me feel uneasy, is because, in addition to that, in my Googles, apparently Milan Christopher came out. And if y'all don't remember, Milan Christopher was on a previous ep- uh, season, I believe two seasons ago. Mm-hmm. He was the gay rapper with the light skinned boyfriend that blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So he basically is coming out dragging Tierra Maria on social media. He claims that he was sitting right next to her when she uploaded the sex tape herself. Mm. And I do remember a couple of weeks ago, a month or two ago, there was a little bit of buzz where he was dragging it. Like that was the thing going around in the blogs that he was dragging her saying that she released the, the tape herself. And so now I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, so what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? Like, did Akbar release this? Is this part of the show? And y'all, some for whatever foreign, unknown, dumbass, bird ass reason. Listen, because that Tierra Marie would agree to do this for this show. Cause that, like, that, that I remember seeing the clip. Like, that was some, like, that was her Mm -hmm. dick in her mouth. Right, we talked about. It. I think uh, we had Rod on. We talked about it when it happened in real time. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, we were, that, we were was, that was real shit. So, right, whether or not the leaking of it is real or fabricated, manufactured, even, I don't know. But, but then I don't know because how? Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm ignorant to how Instagram works or whatever. But shit, fifty then re-uploaded and tab to Yara in it. Right. And so that was why she was suing him. And he was his defense was I didn't post it, I reposted it. Which is like, I mean, that's tomato tomato. Right. right <laughs> like right, you right. spread it. You right. sp- and their thing with him is like, yeah, you reposted it, but you have however many millions of followers. So that's however many millions more people probably saw that because you did that. Right, and then you linked it confirmed like you was linked to Akbar, so right, you know, it's and it, and which makes it even look more shady. Yeah, I mean it was shady to begin with. So, but you know his weak ass. Oh, I, I just reposted it like it's no big deal, and it's like it is a big deal. You dumb bitch. All right, but whether or not they can win that, I don't know. And like I said, she definitely didn't win the restraining order, which I probably feel like was a stretch, especially in regards to Fifty Cent, but. Yeah, Akbar, yeah, 50. Yeah. So, yeah, it just felt like, oh, I'm just trying to do something to be doing something. But, and then, like, this whole thing, like I said, with Milan, Chris, and I haven't really said much about Milan Christopher, but I have, we have to call a spade a spade. Like, nigga, you are so desperate for the limelight. Like, this is ridiculous. You don't, Everything that he's done since he left Love and Hip Hop has been a desperate attempt to keep them 15 minutes going. Yeah, because I mean, because now that I'm thinking about it, like when he was on previous seasons, him and unless I'm tripping, like listeners or Curtis, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but him and Tierra really didn't have that much of a friendship, if I can recall, did they? Not that I can recall. Not to say that they weren't friends, but I don't remember them having a deep friendship 
Right. So uh, him being there when she uploaded it, yeah. and it's just it just seems mad convenient and awkward. Like, why would you be the person that was sitting with her when she did that? Like, that just sounds weird. Right. And then why, if you were sitting there when she did that, y'all had to have had a conversation about it. So why would you turn around and then expose her for doing it? Right. If you were sitting there while she was doing it, meaning you knew she was doing it at that time and you agreed to keep that secret. And now you turn around and you want to be all up in the blogs saying you got definitive proof because you recorded her while she was doing it, which, again, that doesn't doesn't make sense for her to let you record her uploading her own sex tape. That don't make no sense. Right. And it also don't make sense for you to say that because you will be an accomplice to some shit. Now, I don't know Correct. the legal. I don't know the legal, the, the, the damn can't talk the legalities, and you know allegedly if she did upload it herself. But either way, nigga, you an accomplice. I wouldn't want to keep. I would want to keep that shit to myself. Right, and it's like you just. It's sad, you know. You have this fifteen minutes, and you thought that the talent that you don't actually have was going to take you somewhere, mm -hmm. and it's like. Again, with these people, like it's like you are a nice looking man. Like he's very attractive. I would fuck, fake butt and all, cause. Mm. 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 <laughs> but you could just model. Like there's things you can do. All of this other stuff that you're doing, like he has a dildo line out, and so then when Safari got his uh a announcement about getting that sex tip toy deal here come along christopher with his quote-unquote jokes i was the first to do that and blah 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 loving hip-hop loving hip-hop to deal though that you know i'm the pioneer i'm the first one it's just like and safari laughed it off and was like you crazy and i was like i mean it looked like it was a joke but he said it a lot so i feel like i don't know how much milan was actually joking with that because he kept saying it in different places and it was kind of weird. And then you got your little flesh jack collection of the mold of alleged mold of your butt and everything. You know, you did the paper spread where you had your shit, your cheek spread, you had your dick all out. And it's just like you're doing all this stuff, but the music is not popping because that's not your calling. Mm. And this is not this was not supposed to turn into a Milan Christopher Dragon session, but you've inserted yourself into this. Now, since we're here. And since we here <laughs> <laughs> since we pulled up and the windows ain't busted out yet, we might right. as well address a couple of things that I feel like are per pretty much universal knowledge. Like nobody is, is applauding you for your music. No. Nope. Even if you name a song after one of these rap girls, <laughs> <laughs> nobody is coming for your music. And the people that you retweet on Twitter that are gassing your head up about your music, they're only doing that because you're attractive, because they've seen your dick, they've seen your butt. And if they real and they did they research, they've seen your sex tape. Correct. But uh, the reason I asked is because, like I said, I couldn't remember if there were any reports um, of Tiara saying that she still want to be with Akbar, she still love Akbar, when that happened in real time. Because this, and 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 unless I'm tripping, which you know it's possible, I could be wrong, but unless I'm missing something i even in this season though i don't see where tiara is necessarily still fawning over this nigga like I, and maybe it's just me but i feel other than maybe that what that one or two episodes before paris and nikki did they digging an investigation and presented the information to her i feel like tiara was done then like May, and like maybe people are seeing something that I'm not seeing, but I don't, I don't, I don't see Tierra just fawning over this nigga. So it makes it weird. It's like they're like I said, maybe it's the writing or maybe it's the the acting of them just saying, "Well, Tierra, you a dummy bitch, and I need to see you proof of you leaving this nigga for me to believe it." And I'm like, she. 
like I said, maybe it's me, but I feel that the the she had been done, and then when her and Tierra, I mean, her and Paris went to the the house on uh, last episode, that was done deal seal, and now like she said in this episode, we in full on this nigga got the the wrong bitch, and I'm finna sue this nigga. Like maybe like help me out, Curtis. Maybe the, uh, something I'm missing something, but I I just I feel like this is another. This is shaping up to be another. Tierra don't have or Tierra getting into it with her friends over some storyline over some shit that really don't need to be this drawn out fight because Tierra ain't really doing nothing to get dragged. Like I say, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Well, I I don't disagree with that assessment because I definitely feel like Paris and Nikki are some weirdo coward, coward bitches because Y'all did all this shit to kick this shit up. And now that your homegirl is out here laid out and exposed and she needs you the most, you talking about, oh, I can't be involved. I got too much to lose. And you talking about bringing the law into it. So what what's is your Uchi- advice then? Right. Is it Uchiwale or, or one might like she's how taking you taking the action? She's take bringing the law into it because that's what she should do in the instance of someone doing uh instance of revenge porn on you and y'all don't want to come to the press conference y'all don't want to support her when she's doing what she's supposed to be doing to try to get justification not justification justice rather for being embarrassed and and put out there like that i they just look they look hella weird and goofy to me like i got too much to lose my family can't be tied to this bitch you on a whole show you've been tied to it how do you think Going to the press conference and just showing her support is gonna make it worse. Like y'all really y'all y'all think Akbar worried about y'all? He don't care about y'all. Well, what she, if he, what if he don't care about Tierra or shit? Right. But they kind of they trying to say, what if he counter sues and I get named in the lawsuit? I got too much to lose. You didn't do shit. What is you talking about? Right, right. Like did you met the, whole- the man's wife, you met his girlfriend, and then you went and told your friend. All of that is non punished you didn't do shit. What is right. he gonna sue you for? Right. And it's coming off like they like feel like well, we told Tierra about this Nick about this Nick. She didn't listen. Again, like I say, unless I am missing something. We saw the two the first episode that weird interaction where Altball dis- was displayed those signs of being a controlling trying to isolate you from your friends ass weirdo nigga. Y'all peeped it then Y'all peeped it in. Okay, y'all did y'all digging. Y'all did not constantly keep going to Tierra saying, leave this nigga, leave this nigga. Blah, blah, blah. Y'all had, y'all, because y'all know how Tierra is, y'all did y'all digging. Then y'all presented it to her and mostly Paris, to be perfectly honest. Mm. You presented the information to her. She processed it and she said, fuck that nigga after she got the confirmation. So I don't right. get this storyline of, well, I need to see you. I need to see proof of you leaving this nigga before I'm ready to support you. Like, right. Because to begin with, if I'm not mistaken, it started and Tierra Marie was like, y'all ain't saying nothing that they not saying in the blogs. So, right. You're going to have to come harder than that. And that was it. Right. And then y'all took it upon yourself to go meet his wife. And then that was the whole thing. And I believe it got brought up. But it kind of—I don't remember that uh, that conversation because I feel like they tried to bring it up, and Tierra Marie was kind of like, you know, wife, but they didn't really go into. Yeah, yeah, they did, mm-hmm. and she said she asked him about it. And he said that was his ex, and blah 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 blah. And, and so then they, they did some more digging, some more digging, but it was just like. What y'all expected the girl to do? Like she didn't say y'all are lying, but she just said come with with more, and y'all did, and she processed it, and now she's saying fuck right. this nigga, and damn, she's like, saying fuck. I'm, fuck, I'm fuck happy. Ahead. He makes me happy. Blah blah blah. So because that was her kind of her response when they were like, oh, he got a wife, and she was like, no, I asked him about it, and he said that that's his ex, and he makes me happy, and he, you know he's doing this, and I'm doing this because of his support and his love and so then y'all went it was like oh this nigga got a girlfriend too and then when when y'all brought that to her she was like okay something ain't adding up and they all went to his house she was done 
pretty much from the beginning and then she left right so again like i don't get this whole tiara not listening to her she a dummy bitch and i just can't fool nobody that can't see see the truth and the light it's like like i said again maybe it's something that i'm not seeing but nikki and paris moving weird as fuck like i started i liked paris in the beginning but now if, if this is what you know the trage trajectory of her storyline or whatever it's gonna be uh, she can kind of go to hell now because her and nikki being some some weirdos yeah, they some cowards. Like, how are you here for me during some mess, but when shit get real, you're not here for me? What the fuck kind of friendship is that? Right. Y'all just some cowards. Plain right. and simple. And Lord knows we know how Tierra's track record with friends on this show is because mm -hmm. mm, cause shit, when that when they was going around, when when they were when it was happening and everybody was seeing it, and they and Monice was asked for talking about it, and who was it? I think it was Jay Will. He asked, like, you and Tierra speak? And she's like, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she was like, no, we haven't spoken, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. But the whole thing, like I say, it just, it doesn't, it feels, in, it, it doesn't, it feels disingenuous to me. Like, the scenes, the just, it, nothing about this feels right. I don't want to say it doesn't feel real. It just don't feel right. And yeah. some of the, I'm like, because I don't want to say it don't feel real because I mean, again, we saw this happen in real time. I mean, the tape is real, so we can't right. say that that's not real, but the parameters around it is what's looking real funny in the light. Correct. Because I'm looking at some of this stuff and, and she yelling at him like she busted his windows. Yeah, that scene, I was like, this is terrible acting. Terrible acting. Like, why would you admit to it on camera? Number one. And number two, in front of the producer. <laughs> right. But number two, who calls it revenge porn in the heat of the moment? Like, right. I don't know why that stuck out to me. And maybe that's just me being a piece of shit. And if you feel free to call me out on it. But I just don't see somebody in the heat of the moment. You, you have a video of you sucking dick and it hit Instagram. You going to the nigga like, I can't believe you did this revenge porn on me. I, 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 I think it's one of those things where it's like that. If, in the heat of the moment, I don't think someone is saying that that seems like a thing where after like after it's done happen you don't process it and you have the right words to say what what it actually is but in the heat right. of the moment and you mad and shit because like, that's a relatively new term i just don't see people using it off off the dome when they upset that just that's just me i could be wrong but that's just me no i i get i get what you're saying i get what you're saying if one of my like if i if i looked at my phone right now and somebody was texting me like there's pictures of your dick on twitter and such and such is the one who uploaded them i'm not gonna be like oh i can't believe he did this revenge porn on me you know what i'm saying i am be like he leaked my nudes <laughs> right 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 I'm, you know what i'm saying so that part it just it doesn't feel real to me i'm um, i said i wasn't gonna say that but that's honestly how it just don't feel real it feels weird and like I said, I'm not saying that it obviously we know the tape went out, but who released it and why that's the part that I'm just like, uh, I don't know. And then they brought Lisa Bloom on the show and it's just we like would, would, would that white woman be working like a motherfucker. Yeah. Her, mom, her mama got her together when she was about to defend Harvey Weinstein trash ass, but like a dumb ass, but like, girl. But yeah, Gloria like, already was like, girl, we don't come from that. Yeah, we don't do that. It's plenty of it's plenty of bitches out here for you to help. You don't need you don't need to help that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shit. Damn sure not that one. Cause ooh, child. Mm. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. So like I said, whether or not I watch going forward, I don't know. Cause like everything else, I was like, okay, it's still mildly entertaining. The A1 Safari Lyrica thing is still mildly entertaining. It's getting it's old. I won't say it's getting. It is old, but it's still mildly entertaining. But this Tierra Marie shit, it, it this is just straight up weird to me. Yeah, it's weird. Like I feel like they took a very real thing and made it weird. And uh, for whatever bird ass reason, I guess the check. I guess Tierra need to check because she's not in the studio, even though she should. And I did listen to that song that she got, that vacation song. It's it's, it's very nice. Oh, uh, I liked it, but why she would agree to let Mona twist this shit into whatever weirdness it is. Like, girl, we know the shit happened. Mm -hmm. We have plausible reason to believe that it was Art Bar. 
or at the or or maybe 50 or some some kind of way them two niggas had some shit to do with it we know that because we saw the shit in real time so why would you then during filming allow mona to because i because i have no doubt in my mind mona saw that shit happen it was like oh we can spend this because it's mona Mm-hmm. But why Tierra would agree to it, and like I said, the acting and the lines, it just, it, I it, just, it feels you know, weird. It's it weird. feels weird, and I have to be honest about the situation. I'm not after seeing this episode and seeing how they moving and how they speaking. I'm not even sure if the actual leakage wasn't manufactured. You know what? And you know what? But, it wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because not on number one, they kind of leaked sex tape footage on this show before. But then look at the whole thing with Mimi on Loving Hip Hop Atlanta. Yeah, like yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to to dog Tierra or anything. I'm just saying that this franchise or this yeah. this series as a whole has a history, has a history. right of putting out sex Tra- tapes. Yeah. to try to garner viewers so i just i don't want to believe that because i would hate to think that tierra marie would do something like that but after seeing this i'm like i don't it's making it very hard for me to believe otherwise yeah yeah but that's that on that like i say whether or not I continue. It's very slim because I'm like I'm exhausted. I feel like Mr. Ray gonna get beat up again, and if he keep moving the way he been moving, he deserve it. Yeah, because I mean it's Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray don't do nothing but move funny and get beat the fuck up. <laughs> right, cause he moving funny. You only you only motherfucker that get beat up and don't learn no lesson. Bad bitch. Correct. But uh, that's really all for loving hip hop. It wasn't really too much else. That, that, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. squoze a lot out of that too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, since we had pulled up the Milan, you know, he deserved that dragon. Oh. Because, you know, because I mean, this Tierra shit on the show being weird, notwithstanding, like my nigga though, Milan, like really. As much as this don't make sense, your involvement in it don't makes makes even less sense. Yeah, makes even less sense. I just I don't know how you fix your mouth to say I was sitting right next to the person when they uh uploaded their own sex tape, and they let you record them doing it, and you like, say that with a straight face like it's not weird as fuck that you didn't try to stop them. Or that you- right, right. Because how somebody close enough to let you sit there with them, but not close enough to where you could stop them from uploading that shit like right. that. Like you like you couldn't smack the phone out of hand. Like it just don't make no fucking sense. It don't make sense for her to do that in front of you. Like if she was gonna do it, she would do it alone. Right. And you could have been like, you know, she tried to do it in front of me and I stopped her, but then you know, she went ahead and did it anyway. So I don't know. That don't make no sense. That show don't make no sense. The cast don't make no sense. The writing don't make no sense. The editors don't make no sense. The filming don't make no sense. None of it. It don't make no goddamn sense. So I'm good on them. Throw the hoes. Don't enjoy. Don't enjoy. <laughs> Throw the whole niggas away. Yeah, pretty much. Throw the whole franchise away. Like, Love and Hip Hop Hollywood is definitely the the fake leg. It's definitely the prosthetic leg of the of the conglomerate of Love and Hip Hop. So uh, lies and hip hop is that's is what it is. I I would say I would say New York is tired for that with LA. New, New York, York is been... New York is the tire wig. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like every so now York... and then you can you can wash the wig and kind of revitalize it, but it ain't much you can do with a prosthetic leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's, so, it is what it so, is. So you saying New Love and Hip Hop New York is the OG's wig of the franchise? Malaysia's wig, pick one. <laughs> hit and go. <laughs> yeah, it's hit. It's definitely hit or miss. But Hollywood has consist been consistent trash. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, I guess that's not right to say that it's not. You know, that's a bad analogy. Prosthetic legs aren't trash. <laughs> oh God. 
<laughs> it's fine. Let's just move on. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> we have to drive away from this. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of driving away, um, let's do let's do married to medicine. Toya, bitch, fuck you. <laughs> you a weirdo, dummy bitch, and you need your ass beat. But we'll get there. So first and foremost, um, is it just me or does Doctor Daddy Damon sound slow as hell? Yo. <laughs> Like that conversation he had with Heavenly, and he looked like he was having an existential crisis. Like his body, like he was, like he was astral projecting, like Prue from from Charm. Like he was having an out of body experience. I was like, is he well? What is going on here? Yeah, this is hilarious because I I was talking to somebody on Twitter. I think it was Brandy, and she she called him slow. And I was like, no, don't do Damon like that. He a nice man. Don't do that. That's those are two different things. He's he is a nice man, but he also seems to be a slow man. I mean, we know he's not dumb, he a doctor, but <laughs> that I don't know. I was like, is he in there? What is happening? <laughs> you he, he does seem very aloof. He seems very aloof. I don't even know if it's aloof. I don't I don't think it, it's not that he don't care. I just don't think he have it. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, he he I, just seemed like he was out of there. I mean, I Heavenly mean, started asking him questions, and he checked the fuck out. I mean, he married to Heavenly, so I mean, you know, I'm trying you to know get what? You're to right. Maybe <laughs> I mean, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe that's like a defense mechanism in his marriage. All right, the, the, the a nigga start, a nigga start asking him dumbass questions and shit, and he just blank. <laughs> Right, I'm, I'm trying to give some. I ain't saying you're wrong. I'm just trying to give some because I like that. But goddamn, <laughs> I don't know. I looked at that shit and I was like, "This nigga slow. <laughs> he definitely short, but shorty." <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, ooh, 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 "Ooh, good luck, sir. Good luck." I mean, <laughs> but I mean, that's that's fair. I was just trying to give some because I like him, man. I mean, he is married to heaven, so he got enough on his plate. Yeah, he got enough on this plate. Speaking of having a lot on their plate, Dr. Contessa, let me tell you something. Ooh. Mm. When she sprung into action, when that little girl started choking, and it was so crazy that it was like you didn't even realize what was happening. And by the time the sense of urgency and everything hit, the baby was fine. Like they sprung into action so quick. And I know they're doctors, but not every doctor has that reflex listen some tell- doctors are just good at punching in your your goddamn prescription right <laughs> and dr. calling Con- it a day you Con- know dr contessa's like i does this shit. that's why your ass need to go back to work and y'all need to get a nanny <laughs> right so, although yeah. i mean you know i guess you could also say i mean because it's not only that she's a doctor but she's a mom too and that's yeah. like yeah. motherly instincts just heightened by the middle. right so she, she turned she turned super saiyan it's like her, her her doctor genes or her mom genes and she was like oh she she turned into Goku with the reflex. Right. And that part about her father was real too, about trying to bridge that that gap between not having a relationship when you're growing up or them leaving and then you an adult and they want to reconnect. I, I feel like a lot of people can probably relate to that. Yeah. So that was yeah. real. You know, shout out to her for sharing that. Yeah. This was a, a, a episode with a lot of touching moments with Dr. Contessa. Yeah, also her husband is fine as hell. He's very handsome. He's very handsome. Um, what else? Selena Johnson. We see just Selena Johnson on our TV again. Quad right. is she, she is still with us. Quad is is having lunch or whatever with her sister circles ladies, and they're showing her love and support that she knows she's not gonna get from this, <laughs> uh, a gaggle of, of raptors because <laughs> They just want the tea. They don't gaggle of goofies. Yeah, yeah. The the main goofy needing to get beat the fuck up, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Actually, I think we're there. Not too much else happened. Mm. Yeah, I didn't realize one thing. Doctor Simone, Doctor Simone is very very pretty lady, but that overbite and her Mm. side profile make her look like Sandy Cheeks from Bikini Bottom. And her voice, like uh, her mm. voice, can be grating. She definitely has one of those grating voices. But that whole scene, like that, 
girl, that picture that she had printed out, like every time you see this, it's supposed to rev you up. And I was like, bitch, this is the best you could do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then she was like, the Yelp review is bad for this picture. Yeah, but then she like immediately got in her feelings because he was like, I mean, that's cool, but what the point? What's the point of me seeing this picture if I know I'm not going to get the actual goods? Like, what am I being revved up for if I don't get to drive? Correct. If I don't like, get to put the pedal to the metal, so to speak. Right. The car's still in park. Like, what are we doing? Right. We ain't even in neutral. What you? What is you doing? Like, and like, then you get mad that he's not excited. He still hung the shit up next to his TV. Like, girl, what is you even saying? I'm and then that just launched into another tizzy of her blaming him for everything. And it's just like, this is why y'all y'all not gonna make no progress until you stop trying to put everything on him and make it his fault. Something that he need to apologize before it can proper be properly addressed. Take some goddamn accountability. Shit. Right. Take some accountability. Make maybe you make him feel bad. Maybe he don't feel good as a husband. Right. And y'all can't connect for that reason because you too busy wanting him to prop you up and cater to you and kiss your goddamn ankles. But it's like this man trying his best. Right. He's he is therapy. trying. He's like, let's we let's work on it. You ain't even doing a the therapy assignment. It's like, what is you even talking about? And then you're gonna freestyle it and come with this terrible ass boudoir photo like bitch get the fuck out of here right it reminded me of like when you know your uh your your uh, you know your paper due like the next day in class and then you just stay up all night um trying to wiki wiki some goddamn articles and shit so you can piece the shit together and reword it so it don't look like it's plagiarized that's what you that shit reminded yeah, me of half-ass effort that's exactly well it's just like and and Anybody looking at this can that all that man want to do is love his wife, have his wife, and live his life. <clears throat> he don't want to do nothing else. But she making it so difficult, and he the only one with some goddamn sense. Mm-hmm. I never forget that damn uh on the reunion when they had that shit, and that was back when me and Candace were both live tweeting it and live tweeting from the show page. And I never forget that I saw people on social media saying that Cecil was whining. I was like, this is why. I, Never mind. I almost got real problematic. Never mind. Mm-hmm. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. What Oof. is Lisa whining? What is Jackie doing? I mean, like, Simone doing? L- l- screaming like a fucking velociraptor. If that was him, why? If he was whining back then, what is she doing now? Mm. Mm. So yeah, that was that. Um... Curtis is when they went to the party, and I got a good look at Curtis. That motherfucker is huge. Yeah, that motherfucker. Is, that is, motherfucker. Is. That motherfucker built like the mountain. Like God yeah, damn, he, he is tall. He tall and big and ugly. Yeah, yeah. Mm. he definitely looked like some Rocky Road ice cream. He does. I was. He definitely looks like a bad. Like if like if you put like some fudge rounds in a bag for a kid to take the for lunch for a snack at school, it would be Curtis. I don't know. Fudge rounds are, are good to us. They don't deserve that bad rap. You know what? That's fair because I do love me some fudge rounds. Mm-hmm. That's fair. That's very fair. Curtis, he looked like he looked like a Tangu warrior too. Mm. 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 Well, you know. Good luck. Good, well, good luck. luck. He he he's still he weird to me. He's still he creepy. I don't know. He's just creepy to me. Yeah, somebody him just don't it don't it don't curl all the way over. Nope. He creepy to me. So, good luck, Dr. Jackie. That's what I yeah, say. Good luck. Good luck Dr. to Dr. Jackie. Hopefully he blowing your back out and sucking on your well, anyway, whatever. Yeah. Hopefully mm-hmm. you get all the things that you feel you deserve because that that's a creepy ass man. I don't know. Shout out for us seeing evil, beautiful ass in this bit in this episode. Oh yeah. She was oh she was pregnant as hell. Yeah, she, she was very pregnant. Very. To V V pregnant. V. Mm. Well, but that you know, leads us to the last thing, and that is Toya, top of the beat the fuck up list, whatever her last name is. So first and foremost, you a weirdo, bitch, because this definition or what you projecting of what friendship is this season is not genuine. Like, you just want the tea, and nothing that you saying or doing is making that look any different. She got her from definitions of friendship from Twitter. 
literally like to her it's like i should know everything that's going on with you you should not be keeping nothing from me and it's like girl what is you talking about and if they don't do it then you a bad friend you a mean friend i don't want to be friends with you no more bitch start like, throwing a temper tantrum like angelica fucking pickles like girl you are the fuck grown like what do you what what, huh? what? not to me and you grown and everybody around you is grown so if they don't want to share shit with you more than likely because you've given them good reason not to in the past hello. hello but even if they choose to share with you this ain't how you go about enforcing it like i'm the enforcer you better share your your trauma with me that's what friends are for and it's like maybe you are maybe you haven't coveted that type of relationship with your friend like it's not one level to friendship we all got some friends that if with some heavy shit going on they're not the person that we call and we got right. friends that when we're going through heavy shit we don't need to call because they already know not every friend is that same friend not all and friends are you created equal. not that friend to nobody right not all friends are created equal right so she weird off top for that but then she sit up and she stepped the weirdness and the goofiness up because this bitch is like it's my birthday but i'm gonna throw a party for eugene huh <laughs> to show him how much i appreciate him huh <laughs> bitch you sound the fuck stupid what is you talking about <laughs> i turned into that blank and white man when she said that because from the preview i'm thinking oh she throwing eugene something for his birthday like no it's my birthday what <laughs> that first of all it don't make no sense and i get i I somewhat get the sentiment like, oh, it's a it's a noble sacrifice type thing. Like I'm sacrificing my birthday to celebrate him and put him on a pedestal. But I'm like, he don't, because he don't do it enough himself, which I get to a certain extent. But, but it still like, feels disingenuous because it's like if you really appreciate that man, then you would just do it just because you would not have you. Do, you wouldn't wait for your birthday to come around or some shit that's still about you. And you know you're gonna make it about you because that's how you are. That's how we've seen you be for the past five seasons. And as shady as heaven it is, and as mean as she is, she didn't lie like it. You don't do shit but be a wife. So you could have found plenty of time to genuinely celebrate that man because you literally have all the time to work. You don't do shit. Right. It's just weird, and it seemed like some shit that would come up later in their marriage like something she would throw in his face like oh well when it was my 41st birthday who did we celebrate we celebrated you we didn't celebrate me so now that it's my 45th birthday i want another three hundred thousand dollar house and eugene be like bitch what the fuck <laughs> right we're gonna put our ass in debt again right like i could just see her pulling that out at a later date to throw in his face but you know good luck on that front because i don't know about that marriage but if y'all mm. like it, we love it. Because I said, like, Toya literally has nothing. Has, she literally has no identity except being married to Eugene. That's literally her identity. Being she has, married to Eugene and being a weirdo. Th literally, that's all her identity. And she yeah. puts so much stock in her identity and projects it and projects like this image or what she feels like all marriages should be in our relationship should be and it's like i said this on twitter like she would be annoying as fuck but like if she would just if her if she was settled in her identity and just being a wife that would be cool but she projects and be a weirdo to so many other members of the of the of the cast and especially on quad where it's like girl you can go to hell i'm tired right like, why is you trying to take quad under your wing? Like, bitch, that you you don't have no marriage for nobody that you are the last person. <laughs> like, if anything, I would say, if anything, if if it's any one person that I feel that quad should listen to, it would be Dr. Jackie. And that's also because Dr. Jackie is about damn near the only one that's not being a fucking weirdo about quad business. Right. And also has been through something similar. So correct. If she was gonna go to anybody, I would imagine it would be Dr. Jack. It should it damn sure wouldn't be you, Toya. Right. Because all you're gonna do is spread it amongst the group, and then the next thing you know, you or Mariah or or, or Dr. Simone, because y'all got heavy smoke it, for quad it, for whatever reason, y'all right, gonna be throwing the shit back in her face. Right. I often say it's usually one of them three or all three of them at the same time. Them yeah. three specifically. Heavily, I don't think she got too much smoke with quad. 
she, you know, she heavily, but I, I don't think she got too much. She, I don't know if she got personal smoke, but heavily one of them kind of people that when shit gets started, she gonna throw a kick in too. Like if somebody getting jumped, she gonna come in and she gonna steal a kick. Yeah, and keep it moving. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then Toya weird as fuck because she caught herself in her feelings because Quad not coming to the party. And I'm like, uh, I mean, I could feel a way about my friend not coming to my birthday party. But if I say it's not my birthday party, it's a party to celebrate Eugene's promotion at work. Bitch, what is you mad about? <laughs> right. And if I tell you I can't come because I have something going on, then right. I just can't come. If I got other prior, if I got a prior engagement, I just have a prior fucking engagement. Right. If we was real friends, that wouldn't be a big deal because you would know that we're going to see each other at some other point. I'm going to have a gift. Or I'm going to buy you a bottle. I'm going to buy you a drink. I'm going to take you to lunch or whatever the case may be. Right. You it trying to be- force a friendship where it ain't really no friendship. And mm-hmm. that's why you out here on the limb like motherfucking Tina Marie feeling and looking stupid. Mm-hmm. Because this ain't no friendship. You just want to know the tea. Right. So then uh, at that party, I was like, ooh, this first mm-hmm. of all, look, Anyway, that's fine. Mm, mm. Mediocre gowns. Yeah, mediocre there you gowns. go. Mediocre gowns. Mm. Speaking she of still mediocre, did look nice. Yeah, yeah. I he mean, always looked nice. Yeah, he does. That's true. When Mariah called Heavenly Weave Greasy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Heavenly and Mariah were going, well, because when uh, Mariah, I mean, not Mariah, but when Heavenly would talk about Mariah with them teeth. <laughs> so they started dragging each other. I was like, ooh. I don't know. Look, I turned into that uh that gif of um of uh what's the child name? Uh she by Sambo. I turned into that, that gif of Sheree. I was like, Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh, spicy. Right. Um, what else? Simone was doing a lot at the party. Dr. Asia. Heavily was doing a lot at the party when she saw Dr. Damon talking to that white lady. And it was like, girl, Dr. Damon's so slow. He don't know what's going on. He's just trying to have a conversation with somebody. Uh, uh, come your ass like a bullet train. Huh? What was said? What was it? Like, girl, if you don't sit down somewhere and leave that lady and, alone. And that white lady was that, that white lady was like, What was it? Well, we were talking about you. Right. She was like, bitch, we was talking about your stupid ass. What the fuck is you even doing? Like, like don't nobody want Damon. Look, the only one that can put up with, with your crazy evil ass it is Damon. Like, girl. The other th- oh, and then when Mariah shaded uh, heavenly again when she was like, I don't talk to dentists. I was like, oh. Right. And then, oh, then, then, hey, girl, how you do? I was like, bitch. <laughs> and that's when uh, that when heavenly was saying, well, bitch, you, you need to because I don't see no <laughs> the molars. I was like, woo. Listen, Ooh, shit. And she lucky that Dr. Heavenly said that because if you say some shit like that to me, I'm going to punch you in your fucking face. Mm-hmm. What you're not gonna do is play me like I don't know how to get all up in the mouth and get the teeth right, funky bitch. Right when and your you, ass need it, because I don't seen that pre work and ooh child. Ooh. When your ass, not only do your ass need it, you also wear color contacts, bitch. How you gonna look down on me? I'm a motherfucking <laughs> dentist. I got DDS after my name, and you on here with some gray contacts, bitch. Fuck you. You wear color contacts and shit. What you know? What well, since why are we here? We talking about Toya. Toya don't do shit. Wish she don't. What does Mariah do? Wear color contacts like Toya. D- there we go. You know what? Be messy. D- d- that's literally. I was like, listen, uh, heavenly trash in her own ways. You know, let it, let that not be lost. But ain't no way in the hell somebody that's got their color contacts been talk to me any old kind of way <laughs> at all. And, and I got and I'm a whole ass dentist. Like like you say, I got license i got shit behind my name and you literally don't do shit but be messy on the tv right. show bitch. and that was that shit trying to say oh well a dentist is not a real doctor and it's like and it's like mariah are you a real bitch because you don't do shit other than me on the show <laughs> it's like is you is, or is you ain't ho is you hello and it's like well, let's not act like a doctor can do what a dentist can do either like that's why it's specialized field you correct know, bitch Cor- correct. That's why. Listen. That's why Heavenly drew that shit on your goddamn poster at the reunion. Here, <laughs> you trifling mm. ass him. Right. I mean, listen. Look. I'm oh, sorry. Like trash as Heavenly is, and she is trash, and I would never do not say that she trash. But I listen. I mm, that Mariah. That Mariah. Uh, oof. Yeah, she can get beat up. Oof. She has gotten beat up. Right. It, listen. If Heavenly would have beat her the fuck up, I wouldn't have felt no kind of way. Nope. <laughs> 
I'm, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't have felt no way. Yeah, I wouldn't have felt no way if Heavenly went a little hellish on her. Mm, right. Um, it's also weird of- that they keep putting Dr. Jackie in a position where she got to defend Quad because she was in a similar position. It's trash. It's like, what is wrong with y'all? Y'all got somebody sitting in this group that has been where Quad is, was recently in Quad's shoes, and y'all just like, she don't talk to us. What kind of fan is she? And Dr. Jackie's just sitting there like, okay, but put yourself in Quad position. Like, y'all, you ain't knowing good and well, like, y'all swear up and down if y'all was in that position, y'all would be, you would be pouring your heart out to, to Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie and Contessa and all these other... She literally did pour their hearts out to Dr. Jackie. But when it comes to Quad, it's just like, you know, with Quad, she don't, she, Quad don't feel like we her real friends. And it's like, have y'all been? Exactly. Have y'all really been friends with Quad? Even last season, Quad was like, I mean, I'm here, but. I mean, I guess. I that guess. was literally, literally Quad the whole last season. Like, I guess. Yeah. I will be too. Like, y'all some fake ass bitches. And y'all will throw shit back in my face when it's convenient. Mm-hmm. Just like Mariah did. Mm-hmm. So, but then the main thing was that really completes the toy as a goofy that need to get beat the fuck up. When she was being a whole ass weirdo because Dr. Contessa didn't come to the party. Never mind the fact that her whole entire fine ass husband was there and he explained the situation. I'm like, what is you mad about? Well, like she, was, it, she said she was mad because Contessa didn't call her and let her know like a real friend. call her personally. And I'm like, every couple that I know operate as a couple. So if something going on and they and one person can't make it, but the other can, they said that like that person is a representation of that couple, of that household. Correct. And he told you what was going on, but you so deep in your feelings because she didn't give you a personal phone call. Cause she wasn't coming to the party. That's not your birthday party. Like, girl, what are you talking about? Like, you wanted a handwritten rep letter, like one of the Ravens right. from Game of Thrones. Like, but it's right. This bitch won't carry a pigeon, fucking uh, letters and shit. Like, she wanted a letter from Brand and shit. She want a specialized text message just for her. And it's like, if I'm at the airport all day trying to see what's up with my dad, you ain't on my mind. It probably was her husband that was like, well, what, what you going to do about this party? Like, is you going to just stay? And she was like, oh, you know, I'm going to, you know, leave the kids where they are or whatever. I'll keep doing this. And, you you know, you go to the party. That way somebody is there. I guarantee you her, that was her thinking. Like, at least that's that way somebody is there. Right. And, and then her, I, go ahead. her husband even said it. Like, when he was talking to that, uh, like when they semi kind of got into it and he was upset and rightfully so he was like Toya like if you're not that important like if it's my dad and I'm trying to see about him and then he's sick or you know we don't you know we don't know what's wrong with him but we, he's ill and we gotta tend to him like I'm sorry but girl I ain't think about you don't think about my, the motherfucker that brought me help bring me into this goddamn world like what is you talking about I mean, even if it wasn't that, like if I got something else going on, just like he said, he was like, there's a there's a hierarchy of priorities. Right. You know, and, and my and, dad is at the top of that motherfucker. Right. And it just so happened to be her dad. But if whatever I say is a is a higher priority, then that's what the fuck it is. Even if that means I want to sit up here and clip my fucking toenails and eat ice cream. If that's a higher priority to me, then that's just a higher motherfucking priority. And you're gonna have to deal with it. That's life. Deal with it. You have time to deal with it because you don't do shit other than be a wife. Right. Even that looks suspect, mm. <laughs> to be quite honest. And then speaking of, I'm like, you sitting up here and you in, you embarrassing. I can't remember his name for the... for the Eugene. Love. No, not Eugene. I'm thinking about Dr. Contessa's husband's name. Oh, yeah. I can't remember his name. I either. can't remember his name. But you embarrassed him going back and forth with him on the mic. And then I'm like, Eugene, fat, dumb, cuckold ass... Why are you not <laughs> intervening? This your wife sitting up here arguing with this man. Why are you not going to her and being like, "What is you doing? Get off this microphone, acting like a brat." And right, but you know what he did man in front of everybody. Right, but you know what he did. He did that shit that um, that four does. Well, not even. Well, I can't even really say too much. Not even necessarily four because four Hulk out. Now he wait 
way after the fact that Hulk out when the shit gets to the fan, but he uh he tr he did that shit where he he didn't say shit to Toy while she was in the act, but later on when they were sitting down, he was like, "Yo, you was wild." And I'm like, "No, you you're not doing nobody no favors waiting until after she don't embarrass people, embarrass the, everybody." There was uncomfortable with her acting like a dumbass, right? You just sitting there, Toya, just letting her do it, right? You're arguing with this man, he in defense of his wife. And shout out to him for having his wife back. He was like, bitch, you're not about to be talking crazy about my wife. Right. I, mean, I can't remember who it was that called her, who called Contessa on the phone being messy. Heavenly. Heavenly. Heavenly being messy. And so then Contessa's like, yeah, I was trying to, you know, do with my dad and everything. Here go Toya talking crazy. Oh, well, but you couldn't call nobody, but you can answer the phone. Now. Oh, but it's fine, sweetie. Take care. And it was just like, you was a dirty ass bitch. And doing all this on the microphone, thinking it's cute. Mm -hmm. Hung up in the lady face when she was trying to explain. Like, you lucky, you lucky her husband didn't come over there and wear your ass out, cuss your ass out, and leave and knock one of them tables over. Like, you got the game fucked up. Talking right. crazy about his wife and to his wife. Right. But even he said it like she wasn't, she ain't going to say that shit and tell you. I mean, in uh, Contessa's face. Right, you ain't gonna have that energy and contest a face. And if you do, contest gonna beat you the fuck up. <laughs> exactly, or drag you verbally. Either one, I'm here for. But I, at this point, I really wish you would chin check your ass. Correct. Because that's what you deserve. Like you really carried on like a whole fucking dumb ass. A fucking goofy. Just being a brat, thinking that shit cute when she hung up. Like, oh, you, that shit ain't cute. You stupid ass bitch. Hello, friends. Hi, it me, it Jeremy, your favorite uh, big knee vice president. Uh, public service not announcement. Uh, that brat shit ain't cute. It is not the fuck cute at all. I know that seems to be a thing, you know, with a certain sect of particular ladies on Twitter. Uh, but on social media and in real life, that brat shit is not the fuck cute. You a whole ass goddamn adult. That don't. You don't have no, you a whole ass goddamn adult that pay bills, what some of y'all do. But that's beside the point. You are an adult, act like one. That brat shit and doing all that extra goofy shit and thinking it's cute and it's like, oh, well, I can do that because, you know, my man will, as a, or maybe even if you don't have a man, like, oh, I mean, somebody gonna like appreciate that. Go go to hell. Go to hell because that shit is not cute. Thank you for coming to my TED talk, my niggy talk. Proceed, Curtis. Okay, well, we're just gonna move on because mm, that was shade in that. Good luck, everybody. So, Black King Crew Chicago. <laughs> um, when Louis, this come out, we're gonna get a text from Candace in the group chat like, you messy ass nigga. Exactly. That's Direct right. that to the right person because you right. definitely freestyled that. This one. Speaking of freestyles, uh, Cobra calling herself the Grave Crawler, and I'm just like, bitch, <laughs> the Grave Crawler. What does that mean? What does that mean? I crawl in the graves. Why? <laughs> As opposed to walking. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, Cobra already looked like she. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Mm. Never mind. Mm. Yeah, so she called herself trying to be a lucha daughter, and it was like, and then in practice, she didn't even get into the shit, and she got slammed on the mat, and they was like, you're going to have to go to the hospital if your neck fucked up. And it's like, girl, girl. I was like, sis, sis stop, please. Grand opening, grand closing. <laughs> yo, what? Yo, time out real quick. Time out, time out, time out. Push balls. Push balls. So, uh, <clears throat> Uh, I forgot to mention this, but since I used the phrase, uh, so apparently recently it came out, I think it was on Jasmine brand. I think that, uh, Jesse Wu, uh, is going to be a cast member on love and hip hop Miami. Um, which when is love and hip hop Miami supposed to come back? I know I it's soon, know. but when is it supposed to come back? I don't know. I don't think they've announced it yet. Okay. They didn't announce it yet, but it's coming back soon. So we'll cover it. Although I hope it's better than last season because last season was hit and go. But 
mean, so that last season of the first and last the first season of Love and Hip Hop Miami was better than this current season of Hollywood. So that's fair, very fair and accurate. Uh, but she is a cast member, and she um, got into a fight with I forget who. Because I know, Karen, uh, I know you put an article in there. with JoJo. Yes, yeah, she with got the, into with the rich girl. Right, which a girl I don't know why because JoJo about to drag. Who that was? JoJo about to break the fuck up. Fuck, fuck up. Wasn't it on um, Vega? Veronica Vega? Yeah. Ugh. What? Oof. Oh, mm. yeah. Anyway. Racist color his ass. The, right. Mm. Oh, white. Now that really is a white identifying Latino. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, she got into a fight with that. And that's, you know, which is ironic because she was one of the ones that was saying, um, you know, things about Cardi fighting in front of the white folks um, when she threw that shoe at Nicki Minaj trash ass. But it's, mm, but when you do clownery, but anyway, they listed her in the buildings as a singer and friends, listeners, I, I, I have questions. I have questions because I, I pose that question on Twitter because that's what I do. I ask questions when I don't know shit. Um, I know Jessie Wu for having bad makeup and her antics and her problematic tweets and views and things, but I, a singer? Mm. I mean, I, I didn't feel no way about that because I've never heard her sing or not sing. So it's like, I mean, I, I guess. I don't think it's that big of a deal to be because it's like there's no evidence to the contrary of whether or not she can sing. I think the bigger controversy is why is she on this show to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it seems weird to me. She's not even from Miami, or not that I know of. I thought, or I thought she was living in New York. That right. So I'm not sure where she's from. She maybe she is from Florida, but I know she was living in New York at one point. I thought. But either way, like to go from where she was on Twitter and Instagram and on BET to being on Love and Hip Hop Miami, I'm I, I don't understand this this trajectory that we're on. Uh, uh, good luck, everybody. I just yeah. yeah. Since I used the phrase, that popped in my mind because I meant to bring it up earlier, but you know. Mm -hmm. But continue, continue, friend, continue. Um. Lily dumbass. <laughs> she wrote them a four page letter. <laughs> dragging to, them, but also dragging herself. I mean, she was attempting to drag. I don't know if it was so much of, of a drag. Although she wasn't wrong about what she said about Danielle or Van. What should I mean? Well, I mean, yeah, she wasn't wrong about what she was saying, but it was still like bitch or letter. Like you look stupid. Yeah. And they stupid because you leave the, the shop the way you do and then you leave a letter i'm just gonna throw it in the trash like i'm not about to waste my time letting that negativity permeate the air right but it's i mean going directly you... in the trash and we're gonna continue on with our day never knowing what you had to say because who gives a fuck right i'm not gonna give that any more energy then y'all say that she was gone and i mean y'all wasn't wrong for saying she need to go and kicking her the fuck out but why if she's gonna be gone, let her be gone. Like I would have burnt that shit up or tossed it. Some I wouldn't read the shit. I know that fucking much. Yep, it would have went right in the. It just would have went right in the garbage. Like right. okay, here's what well, we think of your last, your last will and testament. <laughs> right in the trash because that's where it deserves to be, along with the person who wrote it. Correct. Correct. Um, I will say, uh, I don't know when, because, you know, when they splice it together or whatever, I don't know when, but uh, uh, that work that Charmaine paid for for her body. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, but the, the editing is weird because some episodes she'd be snatched and some episodes she'd be Sasquatch. Yeah, this episode she was snatched. So, the yeah, you can definitely tell that the editing going back and forth, like the way they put the episodes together, because her body does change. It's pretty drastic yeah. difference in look. But right. So again, I we cause she we know she got work done because present day now, you know, we can go on her Instagram and like she that body good paid. She that was worth every coin. Yeah. But she got good work done. 
That's what right. we do advocate for on this show, too. Right. We are advocates for good work in this surgery. Yeah. Wish you would shut up, but that's, that's yeah, because can can no surgery fix that personality? But you know, yeah. Right. Speaking of personalities that need to be fixed, Reese trash ass went back to San Diego. Yeah, and I hope she stays. I don't want to see the, that white bitch on this show no fucking more. Listen, she pulled a cat. Yep, cat tat. Well, cat can't even say that because at least cat can tat. Yeah, because Re- Reese Reese the thief. Hmm. Mm. Reese's thief is <laughs> <laughs> Curtis go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Reese's thief is Curtis. God damn it. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, you didn't lie. You didn't lie. So, yeah. yeah, but I, you know, I mean, cat is trash and goofy and ooh, child but and let the ass is high and dry put a pen in that we'll get back to that later on but you know she can she does have skill it's just which is a shame that she chose to do the things that she does because the girl has skill but yeah reese pulled the cat she was like you know what i'm good love enjoy it's too toxic and which i thought like how you gonna pull a cat and, and say it's too toxic and leave and like you you are you and lily the reason that shit is toxic yeah you the cause of the toxicity Right, you are the catalyst. You are the catalyst for the caddies. Like, what are you doing, Reese? She trash. But that shit was funny as fuck. Lily said her ass high tail, and I was like, ah. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> that made me wonder because I was listening to the episode where Candace was giving us the tea about Vin, uh, about Jen. Oh, damn, I can't talk about Jen and Van dragging Lily on Instagram. And so I wonder if that stuff that that she was saying Van said about them getting evicted and then him getting the hotel. I wonder if all that happened in between them leaving the shop and then Reese leaving town. Could be. Could be. Could be. But I was, Daniel sure know that her and Van and ain't, ain't on good terms no more. I'm talking about uh, Van and Lily, that is. So, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, could really be. Know, that's what I'm saying. So, I wonder if, like, so when they officially quit the shop and then they didn't have no jobs and then they tried to get a place and... Uh, we know they two dumb ain't uh dumbasses, so they got evicted. <laughs> uh-huh. Right. Cause like they can't do shit, right? Right. But everything is everybody else's fault. But you getting evicted is ain't nobody's fault. But like you can't even blame that on nobody but yourself. Literally. Cause I mean it's it's either you paid them people the money or you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. If you, you paid, paid them the money, money, it ain't no problem. You get to stay. Right, you paid and you get evicted. So. Right, either you paid, either you paid the late fee or you didn't. Right, but we know they didn't because they too broke horse. So, well, well, so yeah, that Why shit. Has that been shit. in the gym. Yes, yes, he has. Good. Yes, he has. That, that nigga talking about his shirt, his shirt too small. Like nigga, you been, you been in the gym. Like I, I listen. listen as as a nigga. As a nigga who has been in the gym himself recently, I know when that move where you been been in the gym and then you wear a shirt that may be a little bit too small, but you trying to show off the muscles. I I right, see you. Right. Flex. Correct. And I follow him on Instagram. Him and Ford be in the gym all the time. So right. it was nice to see for this episode too. Yeah, but since we're here, Lily. That apology was trash. <laughs> Cause it wasn't no apology. It wasn't an apology like I'm sorry, but you did apology. stuff too. It's never a real authentic apology. It's always some conditional apology, and that shit is boo boo. Right. Like, I'm I'm sorry, but then he go you too. But like no, no, if you're gonna apologize, apologize. Right. But Ryan knew what was up because he knew good and well that apology wasn't about anything but trying to get a job or being sorry. Like he knew they had for unemployed and homeless. <laughs> he knew that. He was like, oh, okay, bitch. <laughs> right. Cause then he said that in the confessional. He was like, I don't know how genuine this shit is, or you just trying to act like I'm a fail safe. Yeah. He's like, I ain't no fail safe. I was mm-hmm. like, true. I feel true. you. Energy. Energy. Mm-hmm. Energy. But I mean, he I mean, he and Lily didn't lie about the rest of the the, uh, the other side over there on the shop. Now again, Lily is part of that shit, which she conveniently left out, of course. However, you know, Ryan know firsthand 
because he has a long history with them niggas of how they are. He was like, oh, uh, Van and Charmaine. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, so they don't ran you out too, huh? Hmm. <laughs> she was like, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, they all hate me now. Okay. Hmm. Right. She was like, she was like, I'm the new you. It was like, oh, let's let's slow down now. Let's, let's, slow let's down. not do too much. Let, let's not do too too much. Where Ryan has his faults, he not no dummy, and you, ma'am, are a dummy. <laughs> right. You are the fuck stupid. Let's just call him space, but you are the fuck stupid. Speaking of the fuck stupid, Charmaine, girl. Who that That's woman it. who they get to play her mama? <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say her actress <laughs> mama was getting her together again. Again, like that woman they they get to play her mama. That she be she be dragging the fuck out of Charmaine, but she know Char, her, her alleged mama know that Charmaine got damn goofy. Yeah. She know. And Charmaine was sitting there saying whatever, but in her confessional, she faking the funk like, I don't know why my mama saying all this. Da, 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 da. It's like, okay, girl. you And what you going to do? You're going to do exactly what your mama told you to do. Your right. uh, mama asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> mama. <laughs> Show title. <laughs> <laughs> mama asterisk. Because <laughs> <laughs> that ain't your actual mama. That got to have an asterisk at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Scroll down for the notes. <laughs> I don't believe that's her actual mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my! Outstanding actress, mom. <laughs> you got an actress for a mama. That's why I say you just say mama and then put the little star at the end. That's the asterisk. But anyway, um, she was getting her together. I was like, girl, fix this. You look stupid. You look the fuck stupid. Like, fix it. I have been in contact with Ryan. He, and she was like, I don't know where my mama thinks she can get the nerve to keep keep tabs with this nigga. I'm like, uh, Charmaine. I'm like, <laughs> that's somebody she liked and she talked to. This, that's somebody she liked and she talked to. Y'all didn't date. Like, she ain't got to quit him just because you being dumb. Right. And again, they when they when her mama was talking about all the things that Ryan has done for her, they rolled that footage back. Mm. Listen, let me tell you mm. something. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. And this is my because I told Curtis pregame I had a little rant on my spirit about this. Listen, let me tell you something. If this turns, if y'all think hashtag y'all. If y'all think that this podcast, when we talk about Black Ink, is a Ryan Henry stand podcast, you know the fuck what? That's fine. That is absolutely fine. I don't take no bones about that because, listen, <clears throat> listen. Outside of the shit with Cat, which was Ryan's fault, and, and it's funny that the most smoke I see from people online whenever they talk about this show is this shit with Cat, and the bitch ain't even on the show no more. Which that uh, uh, y'all looking like the motherfuckers in non loyalty ink dying on the hill for cat and shit, and she ain't nowhere to be found. But that's neither here nor there. Listen, 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 let me tell you something. If I did half the shit, half the shit. That Ryan did for them motherfuckers, for Charmaine, being emotional support for her goofy ass, hipping her when her goddamn car got towed with Danielle, goddamn being emotional support for her dealing with Terrence trash ass, giving her a job when she really didn't do shit, but letting her stay there anyway with Van, A1, day one, being with this nigga when he was in jail, helping taking care of his daughter when he was in jail. Helping bringing him into the shop and shit, getting out of the streets and shit. If I did half the shit that Ryan fucking Henry did for them niggas, and they abandoned me when at the at, at the very least, and what they should have done when I got into personal shit that I put myself into, when they could have just shut the fuck up and minded their business, and you motherfuckers turn your back on me. For a motherfucker that left y'all asses high and dry? 
Don't do shit for y'all. Don't think about y'all. Don't comment on y'all. Don't prop none of y'all work up. Don't prop none of y'all shop work up. Don't try to get you no hookups with no clients. Don't do nothing. Don't promote y'all shit. And you turned y'all back on that? For me? Who has done nothing but support y'all? And the only thing I asked y'all to do was let me be a man and own my fuck ups and stay out of my business? And more importantly, don't bring that business to the shop. It is fuck you forever. Forever, ever. And the nerve of some of you niggas I see on social media talking about around when you motherfuckers have done the most over motherfucker that blocked you because y'all disagree. Y'all got some damn nerve. Y'all got all the nerve from Trader Joe's. They must have had a sale or something because you know Trader Joe's got every goddamn thing. Mm. I just don't get it. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Yes, we know Ryan had no business with his fucking with Kat. We know that. He know that. He done atone for that. That is besides the point. The rest of them motherfuckers could have could have minded that goddamn business. Don't you go to work every day and you know some of your co-workers are on some trash shit, but you don't say shit because it ain't your goddamn business and at the end of the day, you ain't finna let somebody else's business mess up your check? But y'all niggas mad at Ryan? The interesting thing about that is that Cat wasn't even like officially working in the shop and all that shit happened. They wanted her to leave Seasons Pride because she was working independently outside of Nine Mag. Right. But I mean, just just throwing that out there, like y'all mad, like, oh, you you messed up the dynamic of the shop. And da, 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 da. how did I mess up the dynamic of the shop when the girl that I've made this transgression with don't even work in the shop? Just because y'all want her to work in the shop, that is not the same as she actually works in the shop. At any given time, I can be like, Kat, you don't work here. You need to go. As the boss and owner of this motherfucker. And that's not even on no shady shit. Like, we literally have a business to run. Like, it's time for us to get to work. We're not sitting around talking no more. You need to go. I don't know what it is you're going to go do, but go do it. So I think it's very interesting. Well, I don't say interesting. It's weird that people are like harping on. But I mean, it's all projection. Like we know people project. We know people get out of pocket and out of they out of their bag when somebody cheats. Mm. And it's, it's fucking World War seventy eight. And it's like okay, mm. like do you do you keep the same energy in your own per- personal pre- uh, situations? Hey, and I, are you even out here dating anybody to have a situation like this to f- fake be mad about and, and be triggered by? But whatever. I don't know. Because I don't really know who complaining about this. But I'm just saying in general. Correct. Correct. So, you know, I just, you know, like I said, I get it. You know, Ryan cheated. And like I said, like Curtis said, you know, cheating is World War Three, And I'm not excusing cheating because, I mean, I do find cheating to be trash. And we, we have called Ryan trash when he be on some fuck shit. On this show, as much as we do like him, you we know, like Curtis said. When he was doing the shit. Right. We called him trash when he was doing shit. So it's not like we're excusing it. However, that is independent of the shit that these niggas did to Ryan when they could have just minded their fucking business. Like, minding your business does not equate to condoning his trash behavior. That's being smart. Right. But my thing is, you can call him trash and you can charge him up all you want to outside of work. Outside of work. And them niggas was doing shit shit. y'all was doing at work. Every chance y'all got. Every meetup when it was more than one person. Like, y'all wasn't calling Ryan individually and being like, hey, I need to talk to you about this cat situation. Like you fucking y'all waited world. until y'all all got together, and then y'all started performing and doing the most. And that's why he was like, All right, I'm cool on y'all. Cause nobody right. was coming to him and being, you know, like Ryan, you really need to keep your dick out of shop affairs so that things can go smoothly. Nobody was pulling him aside to do that. Y'all was already disrespecting the man outside of that shit. Outside of this whole situation. So Anyway, I don't want to keep harping on that, but people gonna peep and be stupid. Stupid gonna stoop, I guess. Not stupid, not stupid. <laughs> um, Speaking of stupid, so uh, that 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 wig that Ashley had on, 
I don't even remember Ashley mm. being in the episode. Mm. When uh, when Four came back and he after he got that tattoo from Ryan, and then he went over to uh, Donna's house and they had a barbecue and shit. Oh, oh I didn't care about none of that. <laughs> but that, I mean, that, that, it's that, nice that. Because four, you know, apparently London on the track been putting and his team been putting four through it in L.A. trying to get this recording done. Mm-hmm. So instead of sitting there doing his work, his ass hopped on the flight back to Chicago to recharge. Well, no, I think it was. Yeah, he uh, had to recharge because she had London had been on. Didn't he say London was on tour? Yeah, London was on tour, but yeah. four and- was still supposed to be working on his EP. Like he got. Yeah. He got uh, and like, he was. Cause when he came back, he had tracks ready for him. No, they weren't ready. That was the oh, problem. Hmm. None of the he didn't have any complete tracks. Like he had, oh, yeah. oh, this track got a verse, and that track got a verse. And he was like, You only done two to three songs, and they not even complete. Like, you supposed to be doing 10 songs. Like, what's the hold up? What's the problem? Yeah, you can't live on that. How I felt about, I don't know how I felt about them other people jumping into it, them white people, that white yeah. lady. Yeah, well, you know, white ladies gonna white ladies, but yeah. right. But I understood with with London on the track was like, I mean, is you gonna get this done? Or is you gonna get this done? Like, I can't be here holding your hand the whole time. And four is like, well, how am I supposed to do the tracks if you're not here so that we can vibe and we can mesh? And it's just like, this is where your professionalism needs to jump out for. Like, if you hungry and you really trying to do this, you don't need London there holding your hand. Like, you hear the beats. Get your get your bars and do what you need to do. Like all these excuses and shit. It's like you've been saying that you wanted to do this and this is what you're passionate about. You don't quit your tattooing job to move to LA to pursue it, and now you kind of half assing it. Like right. If you're gonna do it, if you're gonna fuck around, fuck around exponentially. You can't live off that one song that got London's attention. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, they may be a little unrealistic or they may be pushing him a little hard but the thing about it is this is your dream right like this is why you here like you should be working you should be trying to outdo yourself to make make a wave not even to impress him or whoever the fuck he, his little harem is like <laughs> you should be putting in that work just for you because this is your break this is your opportunity this is your shit second third chance with london right because i'm sure in any other situation a, a, a different uh producer would have been like you got way too much baggage bro i'm good it's always something with you nigga. no i'm good i'm good good luck on your endeavors but london is like i'm determined i see something in you i want to get this done but if i can't go on tour and continue getting my bag and leave you to your own devices and i come back and you everything half ass it's like or half finished i understand london being like i mean i don't i don't know what you want me to do with you i'm not i cannot be here holding your hand the whole time like that and honestly part of it to me is a test like can you do it without me being here can you can i leave you to your own devices and when i come back you have some fire for me to hear and we can be like, yeah, I can see the video treatment for it now. They come and all you got is a verse for this song and a verse for that song and maybe a, a hook for another song. And if I'm invested in you, I don't want to go on tour and come back and hear that shit either. I want some fucking results. So I feel right. like Four could definitely. But I feel like Four is he getting in his own way. He's he like, I don't know, like he's scared of success or what it is. Like he definitely getting in his own way. Like whatever this mental block you got you got to work through that so you can get up in that booth and do what the fuck you need to do right you gotta tighten this the fuck up way the fuck up shit so but i still feel like it was goofy for him to leave like right after you get reprimanded for not having your shit done you leave town (laughs) like okay go prove the damn point like okay i get i get you needed some some energy and everything but nigga that's what facetime is for like you could you <laughs> right. could call somebody and be like i need some encouragement <laughs> damn but anyway so pretty much everything uh ended with ryan having a cookout at his house and for in whatever reason, nigga fashion. well i mean 
I mean, I'm not saying that as a dig. I'm just saying niggas love a cookout. Yeah, I was gonna say we 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 enjoy a grill. We enjoy a grill out. Correct. So Lily shows up with God knows what food. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell knows what was in that damn pan? Mm. And everybody's like, "What is this bitch doing here?" <laughs> right, including that damn drunk ass receptionist. Yep, including her, which I don't remember her name. Bella. But yeah, Bella. Everybody, but you know, Ryan was like, "It's cool, we talked, da da da." And Bella, Bella's my kind of caring though, because she was like, "Okay, cool. If you say that y'all handled it and it's cool, I'm good." Correct. Even at that, like a grown person, not gonna sit up here and be like, "No, you made people mad at one point, so I'm always gonna be mad at you for doing that." Even if you reconcile with the people that you made mad in the first, like, girl, what? Right. So I'm glad Bella didn't go down that route. Correct. That damn uh what's the girl? I forget her Ryan's new shop manager. That her name, I forget her name, but listen. <laughs> yeah, that, she was doing too much. She was drunk as fuck, trying to kiss up on Lily and dancing with Lily. And I was like, girl, I know she don't smell right. I know she smells like mozzarella. <laughs> so what is you even doing? The, uh, Cause Lily, we we seen Lily for a whole ass seasons, two seasons now. She ain't never looked like she take consistent baths. So, ooh. I mean, she's so trash. She just even if she do take consistent baths, that shit still cause just seep out of her pores. Just her aura, her aura is trash. Yeah, she got that old, <laughs> that old brownish green tinge. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just an ugly fucking like color. that weird that Bridget Kelly had on. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> that was a dusty wig. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, N- Nikki, shout out to Nikki. She gave us the breakdown of why the fuck she looked like that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Tighten it up, Bridget. Tighten it up. Yeah. And then um Charmaine shows up. Looking good, I will say that. She yeah, this was one of her snatched scenes. Correct. And as soon as she got there, she started talking shit to Lily, which I didn't understand because I'm like, Lily's already, Lily has already beat you up this season. Right. So I don't understand why you got so much mouth and so much smoke for somebody that's already put hands on you successfully. Correct. And then if you, I mean, she said it to Ryan when, because Ryan was looking like, what the fuck is going on? But Ryan was like, she said to Ryan, like, this is not how I wanted to start off this because I came to talk to you. And I'm like, you could have just ignored Lily. Cause, cause Lily, I mean, trash as Lily is, she didn't say shit to Charmaine until Charmaine popped off. Right, and then she attempted to, woo, she attempted to drag, and it's like Lily, shut up. Yeah, it's like both of y'all the fuck stupid. Both of fuck. y'all goofy, right? right. For different so, reasons, but both of y'all still the yeah, fuck. They went for different reasons, so they went to talk, and uh, I don't know if it was just me, but the way that they edited the conversation between Ryan and Charmaine was real weird. Like it just me, felt, it it felt it, real choppy. Yeah, to me it made it seem a lot. Hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Cause it made it seem it made Orion seem a lot more menacing than I think he really was. Does that make sense? Like I think Ryan was in his bag. You know, for like not fucking with them, which again, fully within his right. Like we articulated earlier. But I don't know. Maybe it's just like I said, how they edited it. But he, they made it him seem a lot madder than I thought that he was. Like the vibe that he had while she was talking didn't seem so much as like, oh fuck this bitch. It was like, the, it was like, okay, say your piece. I'm gonna say mine. And then we cool. But the way they chopped it made it seem like he was just like, like permanently on girl fuck you mode. Or maybe that's just me. It just it was weird, like because it would go from one where he seemed calm, and then the next one he would have a unit on his face, and I was like, it was just, yeah, it was cut real weird to me. But I was right. here for his energy though, because when he was like, look at me, look at me in my eyes, and tell me you think we cool. Listen, like he got real smoke for her, and I don't blame him because again, Charmaine was like a day one in the shop, and you you a day one in the shop, you've been disrespecting me for years. And then when it's all said and done, you take cat side over mine. When you literally could have just minded your business. And then not only that, then after that shit, after I leave the shop, then you continue to put dirt on my name. 
Right, because they brought he brought up the uh, the the uh, when she talked to the tribune or whatever, yeah. which I feel like that was really the nail in the coffin. Like Ryan, I feel like Ryan has, I don't want to say forgiven because he hasn't, and it's you know again well within his right. But I feel like he mold in his feelings and rightfully so about that tribune shit that Charmaine did other but other than the cat shit. Yeah, because it's like that's some shit that could put me in jail. Right. And right. she admitted to it. She was like, I said that shit. Yes, I did it because I was I hated you so much. And it's like, girl. Right. You had no reason to hate him because you was in the wrong. Right. And my thing is you came here to apologize, but nothing in your energy to me ever gave off genuine apologetic feelings. Like you did not seem apologetic to me. She you was yeah. hella standoffish from jump. And then it was just kind of like it was one of them Martin ass apologies. Like, I'm sorry, damn Ryan, is you happy now? <laughs> Please forgive me, Ryan. It didn't feel real. It didn't. It didn't feel. Real. And I feel like he smelled that. He smelled the bullshit. It's like you ain't here on your own accord. You only here because your mama snatched your wig about it. And then yeah. you're not even really giving me no real apology. Just kind of like, eh. I mean, I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? And it's just like. I don't know because I, I can hear people's argument being like, well, what else is she supposed to do? She said she was sorry, but I just feel like the, the Porsche a, argument basically. Right. But I just feel like that there was a better way to broach the subject and have that conversation and to tend to just be like, I did this and you did this and I'm sorry. So just forgive me. Like, can you forgive me? And it's like, we need to have a detailed conversation about this, about where shit. And Ryan was telling her, it's like, we was real friends and you betrayed me. That's the shit that I'm upset about. You betrayed me for cat. And like I said, I wish, <laughs> I wish that Ryan could hear us, probably specifically Candace, here and be like, y'all betrayed me for a bitch that don't even fuck with y'all. Like she yeah. gone, she ain't no. she ain't affiliated with the show, and she ain't got shit to do with y'all. She don't, don't post y'all shit on her on her Instagram. She don't big y'all up. She don't come visit. Nothing. That's what you betrayed me for. You but you you as a day one betrayed me for a cast a, for a castaway. <laughs> right. Well, not even well. Uh, day one, who became a castaway? Because Cat was a day oh, one too. I, yeah, I forgot. Cat was yeah. a day one. Cat was a day one too. But again, my argument is, and there has to be nuance in the argument. At the time when y'all made that decision to side with Cat over over Ryan, Cat was not even working in the fucking shop. Yeah, it has to be nuanced because not all these wrongs are equal. Right, but she wasn't a member of the shop at the time. Like, if you was mad just because that's your homegirl, okay. Well, you don't need to mm. bring that to work. Right. I felt like Charmaine, because I've been trying to think of the way the word is. I feel like Charmaine was sorry for... I feel like she was sorry that she lost Ryan, but not necessarily sorry for what she did to lose Ryan, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's I mean, but that's a lot of people. A lot of people are she she was she sorry about the 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 effect, but not sorry that about the cause or that yeah. what she was the cause. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people they they feel apologetic about the consequences that they have to face, but they don't have any apologetic feelings or any remorse about what they actually did. That's a lot of people. That's mm. why a lot of people's apologies be bullshit, especially that's when we dealing with family but that's a whole another conversation for another day but yeah she right. was like that's why Porsche apology was always boo boo on uh back on uh real housewives of atlanta right because it's like you're not apologizing because you genuinely it took a long time for a Porsche to apologize and be genuinely apologetic about the actions that she took versus having to deal with the consequences and charmaine ain't there yet charmaine is sorry about the consequences she's sorry because her mama basically is telling her she's supposed to be sorry she ain't really sorry though and ryan saw right through that shit and he bit her fucking head off look me in my eyes and tell me you think we cool after the shit that you pulled 
like I wasn't always there for you, no matter what was going on, no matter how much you was disrespecting me, like I wasn't there for you. And then, my, but my favorite part was uh, was uh, Bella and the other chick being drunk and basically being like, what's up with the what's up? Like, bitch, why is you here? We can fight. Oh, why is you? Listen, listen, let me tell you, that shit had me screaming. Like, like I said, Ryan's new assistant, that girl, like she was with, she was not feeling Charmaine. She went to Soon as she walked up, she was like, do we got a problem? Although I will say, I don't know how much it quick because it's like you had that energy for Charmaine, but you giving Lily a pass. I, I'm assuming because you want to fuck her. And it's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. about Your discernment is being called into question. Correct. Correct. So, you again, you, so you I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to give her too much. I'm just going to say in that one scene, you entertained me. Yeah. I was like, you know how we do? can't give them too, too much because, yeah. Nope. Can't give them nothing shit. So. But that was entertaining. She was, she was, she was like, "Oh, why did you hear?" Ryan was like, "Yo, yo, chill, chill. chill. take y'all asses back, take y'all drunk asses back there." And so, uh, but when it wasn't even just our, uh, just uh, them two, Lily came up again too, and I mean, with her trash ass. But I mean, we we not gonna see her like she wouldn't beat Charmaine the fuck up again. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's why I didn't even bring it up because it's like, I mean, we already know you'll you'll beat Charmaine up. You're mm-hmm. looking for a reason to put hands or hug again because you're still mad about all the shit that happened. Yeah. Oh, speaking oh, of man. uh going back to that letter where she said that she was <laughs> again, little half ass apology, like I'm sorry that I shouldn't have put my hands on you, Danielle. Then they cut to the footage of beating Danielle the fuck off. Right. But then but, but then you certain about saying, I mean, I shouldn't have put my hands on you, but you, you do got a lot of mouth and you don't do shit, which wasn't a lie, but it's like, girl. If you're gonna apologize, just apologize, shit. Cause we exactly. we know we know Danielle got a mouth and don't do shit, and her mouth and Charmaine mouth are destructive. We know that. Yep, whole lot of mouth and no hands. Mm, terrible combination. Terrible combination. Mm-hmm. But so, yeah, that's but for the preview. The preview is what had <laughs> me screaming for real. Because when they rolled up, Ryan was like, "The building management called me and was like, what's up with the what's up.'" Like, is you trying to buy this lease or nah? And he was, and he bought. He was like, "Welcome to the new nine man." Because <laughs> mm. four was like, "Well, so what is you talking about doing? Like, you gonna buy it and kick them out because they don't want that loyal ink shit there?" And Ryan was like, "I mean, that shit is dead. That's what he legit said. I don't remember that. He, he said that but shit. The, what would be delicious if he if he was just like, I'm your boss again." I own the lease to the shop again, again. So if y'all want to continue working here, y'all going to work for me again, again. <laughs> but I'm not going to be here dealing with y'all bullshit. Y'all going to have a shop manager and that shop manager is going to have the power to get y'all to fuck up out of here. Like that would be delicious to me. Like, right. don't like just have them see then from a distance. They can't mm-hmm. even get you because they ain't working with you directly. They got somebody else in there. That they got a report to, and that's I. I hope that's what Ryan do. I hope. Yeah, I mean, and, I don't, but I don't know if that would make for good TV. It probably would make better TV just to have a full three or a three episode argument about who's in charge again. Again, so we'll see. I don't know. Like, there's some energy there that I like, but there's also a very big chance for that to slip and slide into goofy territory. So I don't know. I'm keeping my guard yeah, up because I mean they they teetering on goofy anyway. Yeah, they starting to get to the goofy point. Like, yeah, not that the the storylines and stuff have been goofy, although well, Jen mm-hmm. and the Jen and Van storyline was goofy, and yeah, and also we don't care, and we don't care, and then. Well, Don and Ashley's storyline is not goofy. It's just tired. We also don't care. We, just, <laughs> we tired. We don't care no more. So, right. you know, yeah, no I, more. I, like it, we don't got tired. Like G and Van, we just didn't give a fuck. Man, we them. never cared about them. Correct. We never but now did. it's kind of getting to that point where it's like mid season. They like ten episodes in, so the goofiness <laughs> is probably gonna start jumping out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, why don't y'all just cut these seasons down? Right. And make them so long. Right, you will probably get more bang for your book if you cut the, the episodes down, but gave us more substance. Right, like you wouldn't have to sit up here and try to manufacture so much shit to the point where it's easily identified as being manufactured. If y'all cut these seasons down, you don't need no eighteen episodes per season. 
All right. Tate, because shit, I mean, we finna jump to it in a minute. And, yeah, you know, as we're recording this, we're recording this on Sunday night. So the, the reunion is about to start. But shit, look at basketball wise. I don't think we had that many episodes of basketball wise this season. Uh, it was 16. Oh, it was? Mm-hmm. Shit, it didn't seem like it. They've been fighting for a long time. That's why. Yeah. But j- just like on Potomac. <laughs> yeah. That's why. They've been fighting for a long ass time. Right. But yeah, it's been 16 episodes. Because that's because shit. Because we've been watching basketball wise since like May. Damn. Shit. If I'm not mistaken. Cause I yeah. Think- and then also, basketball wise don't took so many goddamn breaks. That too. Yeah. And they took breaks and stuff too. Yeah. But anyway, so what are we wrapping this up with? Yeah, basketball wise. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> We're covering everything. <laughs> we done already dribbled here. Yeah, so I mean, since we pulled up, literally. So I'm not sure how I didn't see this earlier, but a new picture surfaced of an artist on Twitter, and I immediately bridged the gap. And again, I told Candace and Mike about this yesterday because we recorded something special. And I was like, I don't know how I didn't see this earlier. But OG looks like India Ari. Yo. India OG. What? Curse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sick of you. <laughs> India OG. <laughs> I am not my hat. <laughs> I am not my face. <laughs> I am not my family. Mm. Mm. Truth, courage, and ugly. <laughs> mm. not, not the average girl from basketball. <laughs> mm. 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 <laughs> the end. The OG. God damn you, Curtis. <laughs> ugly high. Woo! Okay, all so, right. So yeah, that was you know my revelation for the week. I was like, oh shit, how did I not see this? Oh man, oh god. Ooh. So starting <laughs> up, Shawnee. There's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. So Shawnee was like straight up to Evelyn face, like you betrayed me by inviting Jen to Amsterdam, and I was like, true. Yeah. True. Yeah. Although. And we'll get to it when we get there. But Shawnee, you know, she been getting yeah. side out this season. But Shawnee, we'll get there. We'll get Shawnee, there. Mm, Shawnee, she she tapping her toe and ain't no real bitch territory. Mm-hmm. She knocking on the door. But yeah, so I mean, we can cut out a lot of the fluff that they had with all of that. We can get right to the shit. Which I mean, for the most part, the episode got right to the shit. They all pulled yeah. up Evelyn yeah. and Tammy and uh, Kristen trash ass because you know she loved Jen. We're all mm. sitting there, and in typical fashion, Kristen being messy texted like Malaysia and was like, Y'all come over here. And I'm still, I'm so confused with this whole I have to make a way for you to be able to plead your case, even though you're a grown titty woman. I don't like, get it. Evelyn and Tam, I mean, Evelyn and Kristen did that. Yeah, so they walked Tammy, up. Yeah, because Tammy wasn't here, which. Mm. Yeah, not Tammy. I was talking about Evelyn. Yeah, they they walked up Malaysia and Co. And they were like, "Oh, oh, oh, look mm. who's here!" Oh, look and they who's... all went and sat at the other table, <laughs> which and I thought was funny. I real. thought that was funny too. Even Jackie sat over there, and, and look, uh, I I have appreciated Jackie staying out of the shit and just being in the background. Yeah, I, I mean, she she ain't got no dog in the fight. So. Yeah, she ain't got no dog in the fight, which I appreciate. Just stay stay over there, you and your neck rings. Just stay over there. Yeah, stay over there. You don't need to involve yourself. But and Jen was like, "Oh, everybody's just gonna sit over there. Like, is something wrong with me?" It's like, "Yes, bitch." Yes, right. They they got to the shit real quick. Malaysia was like, "Jen, Jen came up, stand, ah, damn, can't talk." Jen was standoffish from jump. Right, and it's like I don't know how you. I I wanted to talk to Shawnee one on one, and it's like Shawnee don't fuck with you though. So what did you even talking about? Malaysia's like you. That was a long flight for you to come all the way out here trying to talk to somebody one on one. Hey, Malaysia. Malaysia had me in tears this episode for various reasons. For various reasons, but the shit escalated very quickly. Very, very. And Malaysia was not having the shit because Malaysia was like, "You a full liar." 
She's like, I bet you you didn't tell Jen. I mean, I bet you didn't tell Evelyn about all the shit that you was talking about her. Did you? Mm-hmm. And so then she pulled Evelyn aside and was like, what did she tell Evelyn when she pulled her aside? I forgot. Basically that her do- basically the same shit. Basically, she she said Malaysia said that when her and when Jen and Evelyn weren't friends and she was um in that plot. You know, with Tammy to take Evelyn down or whatever. Uh, she, Malaysia, basically said that shit that Jackie had said about her daughter being a builder whore and uh, being a, a, a hoe and all this shit. And Jen, uh, I mean, Evelyn uh, not being around while uh, Shanice had men up in the house and shit or whatever. Uh, that's what Malaysia is saying that Jennifer said to her. Right. Yeah. She said, yeah. And, but she didn't go into full detail because that was later when Shawnee brought it up. Mm-hmm. Um, Which we'll get there. But yeah, so Malaysia was in typical Malaysia fashion, still trying to lie. Jen, Jen. I'm sorry, uh, Jen. Yeah, Jen was in typical, <laughs> typical Jen fashion, still trying to lie. And Malaysia was fed the fuck up. Malaysia was like, "You're not gonna sit here and try to act like you weren't talking shit about Evelyn's daughter." And, 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 hey, and, and little Malaysia turned into you like you're not gonna be playing in my face. Oh yeah, she was like you're not gonna be playing in my face. She was like, oh, I just want, I just need to whoop this bitch's ass. Everybody yeah. was trying to keep her back, and Jen over there talking shit and, like she can fight. And that was listen, what, listen. Let me tell you something. When Jennifer, listen. First of all, let's back back up a little bit. When Malaysia got up and was about to go over there, like I said, um. Couple weeks ago, the first uh, oh last week, the first motherfucker that the first motherfucker that tried to hold her back was goddamn Christian. She moved Christian the fuck out the way so goddamn fast. Listen, when Malaysia picked up that goddamn chair, listen, she and they so had the slow up. motion effect with that shit. <laughs> they did. Listen, <laughs> listen, I was in here on the floor laughing. I was like, oh. Oh, oh, so I see what this by. Oh, okay. I see what we in for. Okay, cool. All right. Last episode of the season, we're going out with a bang. We're going out with chairs. Okay, let's go. All no, right. We're going out with tables. Fuck a chair. Right. Don't you know throwing chairs is old school? We're going to throw old. a whole table. We ain't shaking the table. We throwing the table. Yo, what made it so delicious for me was when they, they, they show her picking up the table in slow motion. Then rewound the shit and show her picking it up in real time and throwing it out of that. Listen, production, mwah, bravo, bravo. Yeah, they did bravo. that. Y'all did that. But I listen. But look, <clears throat> Jennifer, sweetie, you're a liar, bitch. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer Williams, sweetie, you you can't fight. We know you can't fight. You know you, you can't fight. You know you can't fight. That's why you carry around Mason about the Mace Tammy. Now, I'm not mad at you for wanting to Mace Tammy because I believe that Tammy deserves to be Mace because Tammy is an evil ass bitch. And I'm going to get to that later on when we wrap up because I, as trash as Jen is, I also don't want to let, to let it be lost that Tammy Roman is still an evil ass bitch and yeah. a conniving plotting ass bitch because I feel like. Fuck it, I'll bring up my new nigga theory here a little bit. I feel like all this focus on Jen is a ploy to try to absolve Tammy. And listen, I, I, I it, at least for me, I will never cease on this damn show to reiterate how much of an evil, low down piece of shit that Tammy Roman is. I'm mm-hmm. not saying that Jen don't deserve this dragon or or dragons on the show, or whatever, because she does. Because she a lying ass, fake ass. Hate a whole ass helpful too, but let it not be lost. Like let it never be lost that it is fuck Tammy Roman forever and a goddamn day and she can go to hell. Yeah, continue, Curse. That's pretty much it. Like, but we have to wait for the reunion to get back to that point. Or if I don't even know if we're gonna get to that point because I thought from what I saw, what I heard. I, um, from the preview, I mean, Tammy and Evelyn gonna get back into it, but I don't know if that's gonna be on part one or part two. Yeah, well, from what I thought, I thought I heard that like Tammy wasn't even there for that long. Mm. So I don't know if they gonna 
I know they start to get into it, but I don't know if they're going to, I guess, <laughs> keep into it or if Tammy going to call herself walking away. Yeah. Well, so I know in the preview she told uh, Evelyn, out, I'm, I'm, I'm here just like you here. And when we leave, I'll be outside and you'll be outside Before too. That, maybe she was leaving because she was like, I'm I'm done talking. Like, I'm ready to meet the bitch outside. Yeah. Which, I mean, mm, I don't know. I like, it. I know last week, you know, we were saying what Candace was saying, like, Evelyn pick on weak bitches, which I'm, I won't disagree, but I'm, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I just don't believe that Tammy got hands. I know she has had them in the past, but I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I don't think that Tammy won't smoke with Evelyn, but that's just me. I think what you're trying to say is it's not easy to to ascertain who would be the victor in that fight. Right. Because I don't, I don't want to say Tammy don't have hands no more and we can't re- we don't really have a real assessment of Evelyn's hand, but we know she got a lot of spunk, so it's like you don't really know. And she got the body. She got the combat ready about it. Yeah, so you don't really know. So you don't really know if it's like if Tammy just can just flat out whoop Evelyn's ass or if it's going to be a knockout drag out fight or if Evelyn is just going to give her the work. You don't really know, so it's like you can't really <laughs> you can't really have an allegiance either side cuz you don't know who the fuck can win the the fight. At least in my estimation, that's how I. No, that, that is. yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's more or less what, I'm, what you picking up what I'm putting down. Yeah, um, like I said, I don't want to say flat out that Tammy don't have no hands. Same because I mean we got receipts on. Yeah, we know she got, but I don't know if she got but, them like she used to. Well, I even I said that like I don't know if she got them like she used to, and I don't know if. Because you can have hands, but if shit, if you meet your match, you just meet your match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shit. Like it is what it is. Yeah. Anybody can get it. Anybody can get it. But yeah, Jen, Jen, Jen was about to get it. Listen, when Malaysia, right. yo, you know the part that had me screaming when Malaysia said, now nah, I took, I took, <laughs> you gave me the information to do what I wanted to with it, and now I did what I wanted to with it. That shit had me screaming. Basically, she was, I was like, yes, yeah. Malaysia, use Jen's own words against her. <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 even even stupider yeah which i mean because all gene do is lie like I, listen listen because i because uh while you know curtis was out doing niggy things it was just me and candace in the chat and me and candace were talking about it and candace brought up a point that maybe malaysia ain't as innocent in this as she is appearing because that went from zero to a hundred real quick which that's which is fair which is fair which is fair you know you, you know i won't discount my friend's opinion that's fair because i can see it as like well if you didn't have you know as much to do with it as you're saying then why you want to you going from soon as the soon as she come here you want to be the ass you know that's fair i get it I, that's fair uh, at the same time, though, it's like Jennifer has been saying, oh, I got the receipts and I got the receipts and I ain't the only one in it. But every time you say you got the receipts, ain't no receipts to be found. You be caught stuttering and stammering and always in some goddamn lies. Yep. Ain't no damn receipts, bitch. So it's like I don't I, I feel that just like Tammy and Jen said one or two of them or both of them wanted to. Like Malaysia said, wanted to use Malaysia to pass some shit along. Malaysia didn't do that. And so, um, well, oh, yeah, she didn't do what y'all wanted her to do because that ain't Malaysia thing. She likes to stay out of shit, which don't always work because, you know, we see how she is with, with, with this shit between Cece and Kristen. But, you know, that's another topic for another day. Mm. Um. And the shit didn't work out. Y'all wanted to use Malaysia as a pawn because, I mean, you know, it's Malaysia, and you know, she, she, she kind of yeah, she had to, the right idea. She, she knew what they was doing because I think that was when she was like, "Y'all think I'm stupid? That's why y'all was trying to use me to do this shit." Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, Jen got her whole car pulled because again, nothing about this shit since since Tammy Trash has brought this shit back up on her plot to get back with Evelyn, nothing that her or Jen has been saying has been adding up and making sense. And it just so happened that Jen keeps looking more the fuck stupid because 
Um, because the, Tammy basically removed herself. Right, because Tammy basically removed herself, which smart on her part, even though it's still fuck her. But smart but cowardly. Smart, smart but cowardly. And it's all focused on Jen, and Jen can't tell the truth to save her goddamn life. So I mean, she ain't got no choice. If she tell the truth, she gonna get her ass beat. I mean, but that's the thing. Like, if she tell the truth, she gonna get her ass beat. And if she lying, which she did, she still gonna get her ass beat. It's like at this point, sis. I mean, you don't rile this shit up. You just gonna have to take that ass whooping. Yeah, or some, or leave something. Pull a Tammy. Remove yourself. So right, go on a spiritual journey. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and Malaysia said you think you scared of your ex. L- listen, I'm gonna show you who the big gorilla is, ho. L- l- that listen, Malaysia, Malaysia, Bravo. You, you listen, you performed this episode because goddamn. Alicia said, I'll show you where what you need to be scared of, bitch. All right. Listen, when, when goddamn Kristen was counting, listen, any motherfucker you got to calm them down by counting, that ain't who you want. Oh, yeah. That ain't who you want to fuck with. Gene yeah. talking about, talking about I, ain't, I ain't come here to fight, but if you want to fight, I, we can do this. If What's that's up? What like you want to do, girl, you going to. And I'm like, are you trying to. Like you having this smoke because you're trying to perform for Evelyn because since you're going to get your ass beat, like what is you talking about? Somebody is willing and able to throw a table at you. A whole ass table. She talking, she talked in her confessional. She was like, she thinks, Malaysia thinks she bad and this and that because she's for Compton and shit. And I'm like, well, d- d- do she not have a right to be? Like, did you not see her throw a whole ass table at your ass? It's like it don't matter. It's like it ain't got nothing to do with with where Malaysia's from. She's just pissed, <laughs> right? And she's gonna beat your ass. Like <laughs> I don't you know if you think I don't know what it is. Reckless. I don't know what you think you're doing in this in your new Basquiat skirt, but girl, this ain't it. This ain't it. This ain't it, and this ain't that. And you gonna get your ass tapped? Like <laughs> listen, any motherfucker that's saying, "Look, I will gladly go to jail." If it means I can beat your ass, that's not who you want to fuck with. Malaysia even said it like, "Girl, you acting like you can't, like you can fight. I know you can't fight. I was friends with your ass. I know you can't goddamn fight." Mm. She was like, like, "Meanwhile, I grew up with seven hundred cousins and had to fight all of." Listen, first of all, all my look, life I had to fight. Listen, Malaysia, you don't, you you don't fought the goddamn White Walkers or something, because goddamn, like the, the, you been fighting who and what and, and how long? All my life, I had to fight my cousin. Had to fight snaggle two bitches. Like girl, you, 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 you find shadow clones from Naruto. Like goddamn, this is yeah. okay. Man. Hold the fuck, stupid. So, but then we fast forward because we've been here for a minute. We fast forward and Malaysia. They take Malaysia out of the situation and they like, mm. oh, girl, like this is too much. Yeah. Um. Shout out to Jackie for getting her the fuck away because she know what <laughs> she was about to go to goddamn jail. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so then it turns to Shawnee because at this point, Evelyn is like distraught because she can't believe her good friend that mm. she just knew had her back, was talking shit about her daughter. Mm. And she was starting breaking down crying because that's Evelyn's new shtick apparently is to break down and cry. Mm. Um... Which is the fuck annoying in the cell Which is annoying because it's like, girl, just, I would rather you throw the hands than me sitting up here doing all this boo hooing. But right, because listen, old, old Evelyn would just throw hands. Like new Evelyn and all this. And I crying. get it, you trying not to be the same, but it's like, at the very least, like, can we leave the tears? Like, you Let's ain't got to te- throw hands, but what is all the crying about? Like, girl, I'd rather you walk away than do all this crying. Um, so then Shawnee steps in and basically it's like, Jen, you a liar because you told me that these are the things that you said about Evelyn's daughter. Basically, that she was paying the bills at 16 because Evelyn was always in the street. Like she was the one writing the check and that she was a whore. She'd been a whore since she was 16. And da 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 da. And, and, and Evelyn is like, You've been in my daughter's face saying how much you love her. And Shawnee was like, yep, in your daughter face telling you you love her. But back in the gap, she was telling everybody that would listen that she was a hoe. She'd been a whore since she was six. Not a hoe, a whore. Right. They said it. They said it. They said it proper whore. Meaning she was fucking for money. Mm-hmm. 
a whore since she was 16. And what had me, the part that had me screaming is that Evelyn was boo hoo crying, but she was taking them earrings off. <laughs> <laughs> like the old Evelyn was jumping out at that point. <laughs> and I just need to know what you said, taking one earring off. I just, I just don't understand what was said about Shawnee's take those earrings. Earring, earring off. <laughs> and Shawnee knew what was up because Shawnee was like, oh Lord. <laughs> Yo, yo, again, she was like, she taking these earrings off. What and goddamn, uh, again, I ain't trying to give it too, too much. I'm just saying, like, again, Jackie too, because as soon as they rolled up and and what was said was said, Jack was like, oh, hell, oh, shit. yeah. But she the knew thing it. about it is what you she were knew. saying, yeah, she knew what you were saying earlier about Shawnee looking funny because all of this. shit basically was was brought up because Tammy claimed that there was a rumor going around Miami a year ago and it was a whole year that they didn't tell you about it and then you turn around talking about oh I got this information that Jen was talking shit about Shawnee's mm -hmm. but I never said anything like you look the mm -hmm. fuck stupid doing the same shit that they was doing, but because it's you, it's a big deal, and you mad, although you ain't got mm -hmm. no smoke from Tammy, which still doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe I do the same shit, girl. That's, that's why I believe, and I know we said this in the chat, um, I believe that uh, what we talked about in the chat, I believe Shawnee just made that up because she, by whatever means, just wants to make sure that Jen gets out the fucking paint. I don't think Shawnee made it up because Jen couldn't even refute it. Hmm. I think I think Jen actually said that shit. I just feel like Shawnee was looking like a hypocrite. She was looking like a hypocrite, but at the same time, you have to remember that Shawnee kind of has like a she has a more business mind than the rest of them. So she probably was was in fact saving that in case some shit popped off and she needed to use it later. Like hmm. if nothing happened, she probably never would have said anything. Mm. Because Shawnee see strikes me as the type like I collect this information in case I need to use it, but I'm not malicious to the point where I'm gonna use it just to be using it. Mm. Or because we have a little disagreement, I'm gonna come come after you. But she know the information, but she ain't finna go full Tammy. Right, she's not going full Tammy or Jen for that matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but at first I was like, this seems real convenient that Shawnee has this information. But number one. I don't think Shawnee made it up because it wasn't just Shawnee that was saying it. Malaysia was saying the same thing. Yeah. She, she didn't say the specifics, but we we have to we know that Jen definitely had to have been saying something because Malaysia knows about it too. Yeah. And then Shawnee knows and about Malaysia it. Malaysia even said that. How would I if I'm lying, how would I know it if unless I heard from you? And then she asked, because she asked Evan like, how would I like does did y'all have what she said? Did y'all have live in Miami or did y'all have an apartment in Miami or something like that? They had a roommate, is what yeah, she said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the room I forget the the story. The roommate, that. I think the roommate told both it was like uh, talking uh, shit or something. Yeah, both Malaysia. She told Malaysia and Jen. I think I think right. that's how it went. Yeah. But Shawnee was like, Yeah, so I was supposed to say I don't think Shawnee was lying. But again, the main indication of that is Jen couldn't even defend herself. When yep. Shawnee finally said the shit, all Jen was saying was, you know, I love Shawnee's and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, because and, before and that, she, she was like, I don't admit, know what you were talking about. I she would know. never admit that she said the shit, but she wasn't denying it either. Yeah. She, she wasn't pulled, she, pulled, she pulled a safari. Yeah, basically, she talked around the shit. She, was, she never admitted or she never just came out flat out and been like, I've never said anything. She she did say that. She was trying to say, I never said anything about Shawnee's. But then when ten, when uh Shawnee brought it up, Jen couldn't say shit. She didn't have no defense. She was just like, Oh, well, um, you know, I would I would never do anything to hurt either of y'all. I love y'all and da 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 da. And how you know that that's because because Evelyn was never satisfied with her answer. Evelyn wanted to beat her ass the whole fucking time. And taking them earrings off. <laughs> taking them earrings off and walking around Wu Sign. She was in her confessional, like, I want to punch this bitch in the face. Listen. <laughs> and I will, I mean, and she she justified in that because it's like, I've been defending your ass. After you stupid you defending your ass. To me. 
to the point of stupidity and looking the fuck goofy all to come full circle find out you did the same shit to me that you did to me you did it to my daughter and Evelyn is like most parents where it's like I don't care what you say about me but you're not going to talk about my child mm-hmm. yep so and we've seen that when her and Jackie got into it when Jackie said that shit her and anybody she anybody mentioned her child and Evelyn ready to fight which I ain't mad at but I'm like, Jen, you again, you looking the fuck stupid mm-hmm. and you fucking lying, still lying. Yeah. Yeah. You claim you don't remember the conversation, but you automatically know you didn't say it because that Make was it. that was the part that was confusing to me. Like she swore up and down. I don't know what you're talking about, Shawnee. We never had no conversation. I don't know what you're talking about. And then when Shawnee said it, it was I never said that. I know I never said that. I'm not sure when we had a conversation, but I know I didn't say that. It's like you. You sound stupid. Is it Uchi Wale or is it one mic? It's Jen get beat the fuck up. That's what it is. And the other thing is how you know that there's some validity to it because Evelyn said, put it on your mama. And then Jen tried to change the story again. And then fast forward because Evelyn ended up walking away. She didn't put her hands on nobody. She walked away and they had a little girl session without Jen. And they were smoking and and getting high and stuff. And then the next day, because Kristen is a stupid bitch, <laughs> she goes to meet with Jean. She's like, "Oh, I just I know that she looks real bad and she's done a lot of lying." I don't want to just throw Jean. No, no, wait, we gotta back up. Like when 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 uh when Malaysia was telling when they walked off and Malaysia was telling her like, "This is what I've been trying to tell you about this about her," oh, and yeah. in the confessional, um. Uh, Christian's ass was like, I mean, I know she looks bad and it, it looks bad, bad, but I don't want to just throw her away. I want to give her a chance to at least take some accountability. It's like, girl, if she hadn't been doing it this whole time, what makes you think talk, you talking to her is going to do it? And you got a fucking a lot of fucking nerve to say somebody need to take accountability for anything. Correct. Now, I was like, hey, now, this ain't the pot calling the kettle black. I'll be damned. All right. But yeah, so she met Jen independently. I mean, and she didn't really hold no, she didn't really pull no punches with Jen. She was like, Yeah, I give it I that. I mean, girl, you you out here lying. Like, what is you even doing? Yeah. And Jen was like, sounding like typical. Jen sounding like typical girl after she get beat up on the playground and being like, That bitch ain't shit. She ain't really even hurt me that bad. Like, look, you know, this my lip is gonna be down by tomorrow morning. She mm-hmm. ain't really even hit me that hard. She weak as fuck. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, she ain't got a whole black eye and her, her ribs sticking out. But she talking shit. A matter of fact, just like that lady from McDonald's that got beat up and still talking shit. <laughs> like, how mm-hmm. you get beat up by two different people and you still talking shit? You don't want it with me. I already had it with you and you didn't have nothing for me. I beat your ass. <laughs> Correct. So. Me and talking about, I feel like that was a whole gang up on Jen session it's like sis and it's sis. like nobody everybody was quiet except for malaysia and she wanted to throw a table at you and, and then shawnee or she threw the table at you because she couldn't get to you but nobody would nobody if it was a gang up session everybody would have had something to say to you og mm-hmm. didn't say nothing to you Kristen didn't say nothing to you. Cece didn't say nothing to you. Jackie didn't say nothing to you. Jackie didn't say nothing Jackie to you. Jackie was trying to defuse the situation. Right. Jackie was trying to keep Malaysia from beating your ass. Right. Because the damn show wasn't Kristen because Malaysia just threw her the fuck out of the way. <laughs> yeah. She was like, breathe, count. And she was like, bitch, get out of my face. Right. You're about to count, count these hands if you don't move. So then they walked away and jim's like i guess nobody like me no more whatever she's i don't know i don't even remember the whole scene i just i was it just sounded and looked so stupid and kristen looked stupid like i guess there's no coming back from for her from this it's like yeah and it's the bitch that you've been out on a limb for the whole season looking the fuck stupid mm-hmm. throwing family under the bus for her. right throwing family under the bus or should i family asterisk <laughs> <laughs> Because she conveniently family when ain't nobody coming to visit your little rug rat. But she ain't family when it's time to stand up against these bitches talking shit about her. So is it Uchi Wale or one mic? Yes or no? Asterisk. Asterisk. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Yeah, so I mean, I I can't wait to see the reunion. Like I say, as mm-hmm. we're recording, I think the reunion, if if, it's, if it hasn't started, it's about to start as we're recording. Yeah, so, so we'll talk about the reunion. I mean, we'll see. I I realized this week I'm not real crazy about the reunions or none of the shows because they be disappointed most of the time. Yeah, it was a time when the reunions would be like, when they fought, when they stopped letting people fight. That's when the reunions got. Blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. my thing is, we spend the whole season talking about this shit. Then we're gonna turn around and we're gonna rehash the shit at the reunion, and nothing really gets solved. Like yeah. even with the Housewives of Atlanta reunion, like nothing got solved. Yeah. They was just although we did have hashtag forward. content. Yeah, I mean it was content, but nothing was solved. So I don't know. Yeah, we'll see if I feel like watching <laughs> <laughs> basketball wise reunion. But we got that reunion. So basketball wise is getting ready to be out of our faces. And I, I don't remember what's next. I I want to say growing up hip hop. Yeah. yeah. Atlanta's or I don't know if it's the regular one or Atlanta. I think Atlanta. But it's supposed to be coming up, and because mm-hmm. I don't seen people talking about it on on the, on yeah. s- on the social medias, yeah. I didn't see the premiere date, but I think it's coming up soon. Because I've seen the commercials for it, and yeah. we talked about it on this show about Lil Mama and Masika and somebody else joining the cast. Mm-hmm. So that'll be interesting to see how the fuck Masika is supposed to be growing up hip hop, right? Because or, or Atlanta. I mean, growing up hip hop, they're both called a grown up hip hop. Oh, yeah. But growing up hip hop, and you grown as fuck. <laughs> you grown as fuck, and you got a baby that can't even walk. Right. Like, what are we even talking But anyway, so we'll see. I'm glad that basketball wise is wrapping up, though, just for mostly because I'm tired of seeing Christians being trash and OG being ugly. Yeah. And GN lying. Angie and Lion and Evelyn looking stupid overlooking it, and then Shawnee also looking stupid overlooking Tammy Lion or Tammy right. being trash, rather. Yeah, I was saying Tammy being trash. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to Black Ink Crew Chicago next week and Married to Medicine. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, because Quad coming back to the group. And yeah, Quad I- is finally coming, Ooh. and Ooh. it looked like her and Mariah already getting into it, and Mariah low-key kind of put her hand on Quad, and I don't know. I feel like in a different situation, Quad would have beat Mariah's ass, but Quad got a lot to lose, and she can't afford to lose it. Yeah. How I mean. But anyway, we'll get into that next week. So I think that wraps up this episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we are wrapped up, and thank you all so much. Um, like I said, it's going to be me and Curtis, and um, we we'll have a, a guest for next week. Um, like I said, we're gonna start staggering our breaks and such. Um, but still producing hashtag content, hashtag consistency. Um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully we'll see. Hopefully we get a little bit more to work with. Plus, I was I was a little alleviated this episode. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. feel I was like, uh anyway. When you when you when you when you have good friends and when you have people visiting, you have to do special teams. Yeah, special teams, special teams, special teams involving the queen. Yeah, and the green. <laughs> <laughs> You're not an amazing friend, but uh, we yeah. that's this has been an episode of Ratchet Ramblings. Um, go to our website cspn.us. Uh, listen to all those shows on. The, great shows on the network um go to our friend curtis's podcast the gay side stores gay star gay side stores.com is the hub also don't forget to use the hashtag pods by qpoc um that is you are queer and a person of color and you do a podcast no matter what the podcast is about if you identify as queer and you're black or you're brown or whatever non-white you identify as use that hashtag Go to the Instagram page. There's a link where you can submit the details for your podcast to be included in the directory. There's a link on Twitter doing the same thing. It's all pods by QPLC. Check that out. Check out our shows, Not So Newlywed, Crown and Collars, all that good stuff from the CSPN. New episodes should be coming. I think Mama Me's World is going to have an episode this week as well. Correct. Check us out. And if you want to 
get some bonus content, then head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com. I believe it's patreon.com slash CSPN Media. Mm-hmm. Go over there. You can subscribe. I think one, three, or five dollars, and that'll get you access, depending on what tier, that'll get you access to behind the wall content from us, Newsy Floozies, and yes. all the other shows. So if you want to help us out a little bit more and you want to get some more dragging, some things that we don't talk about on Ratchet Ramblings. All of that stuff is behind the paywall. So the next Nikki dragging and whatever Ooh. else happened in the world, all of that stuff is going to be behind the paywall. So if you want a piece of that, if you want to hear Candace going off, because it's probably mostly going to be Candace, <laughs> then head on over to the Patreon and yeah. give us a little change and you'll have access to that. And I think that wraps up this episode. Yep. So, so. we are out. We'll be back next week. And Curtis, take us out with a bit of addiction, friend. Uh, this week's benediction is instead of throwing bows, throw them tables. Word to Malaysia. Word to Malaysia. And Laquisha. A real government name, Laquisha. Oh, the yeah, Laquisha that's... jumped out. The yes, the Compton Laquisha jumped out. That's that you know that is fitting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. But all right, we out. Peace. Peace.